Hands clapping and make some noise for Sunday lead off. Looking forward to this day. Today we take a trip north of the border. The roof is open in Toronto as we welcome you to MLB Sunday leadoff presented by Uber One. Blue Jays and Angels continue their battle in the AL wild card standing as they wrap up the series here at Rogers Center. We say hello from the broadcast booth. Thank you so much for joining us here on Peacock. I'm Brendan Burke, analyst from both the Blue Jays and the Angels, Joe Siddle, Mark Gubiza. Good morning to those out in Orange County watching your Angels here today, who came into this series with a ton of momentum. They committed to keeping Shohei Otani. They added to the roster. They had won eight of nine, but it's the Blue Jays who have come in and taken the first two games of this crucial series here in late July. Friday night, Shohei Otani, first pitch he sees, goes deep, leading the majors 39 home runs this year. Lucas Giolito flies in, makes his Angels debut, and the power of the Blue Jays got to him. Matt Chapman, Whit Merrifield, both homered in the game on Friday. 4-1 lead in the ninth. Base is loaded. Otani due up. Couldn't bat because of leg cramps. Jordan Romano strikes out Michael Stefanik. Jays took game one of this series 4-1. Then yesterday, it was the bottom of the Blue Jays order that did all of the damage. Alejandro Kirk hit four home runs in his first 76 games of the season. He hit two yesterday. Santiago Espinal hit one as well. Jays won that one 6-1. So Toronto has certainly helped itself in the wild card picture, pushing the Angels deeper into the crowd of hopefuls. Red Sox making a push. Yankees got Aaron Judge back. Seattle in there as well. It all sets the stage for an important game today for the Angels and the Blue Jays. So, Joe, let's get into these Blue Jays. They have risen to the occasion in this critical series against the Angels, and the offense has come to play. They have come to play. Last offseason, the Blue Jays' focus was improving the upfield defense. They did that. Pitching and defense has been good, but the offense has not necessarily met expectations. We thought this was going to be a powerful offense, and they've lacked in the power department. If what we have seen on display in this series is any indication of moving forward, this is a really good sign for John Schneider's club because homers play, and they they especially play if they can get to October baseball. All right, Gooby, this Angels week, what a roller coaster. Not even a week. It has been with the Angels. They commit to keeping Otani. They become buyers at the deadline. And they come in here just two runs so far in the series. Yeah, total. Brandon, I mean, you think about it, that, that momentum going. Show Otani to stay. You got Lucas Giolito, but when they're done with runners in scoring position, 0 for 17. The approach has been a little bit different. Instead of going that middle part of the field, they've been trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark. You expect them to do a little bit better against Barrios. They've had success. Show Otani's not going to get many pitches to be able to swing and, and hit. And Moniak had an AT game hit streak snap yesterday. He's so important to the lineup. Well, before we get to first pitch here, let's send it down to the field. I'm at free Dexter Fowler, guys. Hey, thank you, Brandon. So, yeah, we're all watching Otani all the time. You played with him. You were his teammate. Take us behind the curtain into the clubhouse, what he was like there. You know what? And there was a lot of stars in the clubhouse. You had Trouty, you had Albert, you had Jay up. And you go in there and it, show he has an air about him. Like, he's the nicest guy ever, great teammate. But when he walks in the room, he demands respect. And, I mean, he shows it out on the field. And, and playing, seeing, it, seeing what he does every day, he was never with the position players, always with the pitchers. Then he goes out and just hits homers, and he's the fastest guy on the field. It's crazy. How, how many pitches do you think you'll see today? Because we saw two intentional walks yesterday. Uh, not, probably not many. If, they, if there's somebody on base, they're not, they're, they're, they're not giving up. They're going to they're gonna put them on, I think. All right, Brandon, let's send it back up to you. All right, thank you, guys. So, Tani doing the work of two people doesn't mean he takes a day off. He will be in his normal number two spot in the lineup this afternoon. And the man that will face him and do his best not to make any mistakes on the mound against Shohei Otani for the Blue Jays, their starting pitcher today, Jose Barrios. Barrios is looking like the Jose Barrios of old. He had an outstanding career, very consistent, reliable starter with the Minnesota Twins. When the Blue Jays acquired him, not only did they acquire him, but they extended him. He is here for a while, and the good news after a very strange 2022 season. He is back to being himself. But I think last year he had a lot of very good games. It was a strange season in that regard, along with when he was bad, it went 
really south and it was just a very different looking year. He worked on a lot of mechanical tweaks in his delivery over the offseason and they are paying huge dividends. Here's the pitch arsenal powered by Stackhouse, powered by Google Cloud. You can see what we expect from Barrios here this afternoon. Yeah, you see that slur, but so often we're hearing that word sweeper. But this is actually the combination of slider and curveball and sinker, which is very, very effective for him. Four seam fastball and changeup also. And look at the percentages. He's become very unpredictable, throwing all of his pitches almost an equal amount. That makes it very difficult on hitters when they don't know where he's going next. And when he became predictable, and you look at some of the numbers for the Angels career wise, a lot of good hitters in this lineup for the Angels here today. Day, including Shohei Otani with monster numbers against him. I don't know how many pitches he's going to see. Renhifo, good numbers also. A lot of left-handed batters in this lineup. When you look at the splits against Brios, 261, eight home runs allowed for left-handed batters against him. Righties is 212 with this six home runs allowed. And also you look down at the bottom part of the Velasquez in there playing shortstop. No Taylor Ward here today. Obviously getting hit with that pitch yesterday. Hunter Renfro, the only right-handed bat in the lineup today against Jose Barrios. The defensive alignment for the Blue Jays, Merrifield, Varcho, and Springer out in the outfield. Chapman, Bichette, Espinal, and Guerrero around the infield diamond. Danny Jansen catching here today. Alejandro Kirk is the designated hitter. And Alejandro Kirk is finding that power stroke. That's really good news. Danny Jansen and Alejandro formed a very powerful offensive tandem last year. One of the best in baseball. And John Schneider is hoping Kirk can find that power stroke and up and down that lineup this this order has just not been as strong as we had thought leaving spring training. That'd be a strength of this club. And I look at the defense out there in the outfield for the Jays. A much more improved defense and uh, good arms throwing arms in the outfield, too. Kevin Kiermaier's not even in the uh, lineup no. today. <laughs> we may see him before the end, though. We are ready to go here on MLB Sunday leadoff. Blue Jays and Angels final game of a three-game series. Jays have taken the first two. It is a beautiful day for baseball as Barrio steals ball one to start things off. 73 degrees at first pitch. The roof is open from the start today. It started closed yesterday and opened during the game, which is always interesting. But today, the sunshine shining bright on the field here at Rogers Center. You know, I was always wondering how difficult it is for a hitter when it's opening up in the middle of an inning. Is it different for your, your eyesight to be able to track it? What do you think there, Joe? Well, and we saw that yesterday. Yeah. The rain was coming down all day, but just around game time, it was stopping. So the roof opened. And what's more interesting were the shadows. So we saw the outfielders kind of battling a little bit, but it looks like a beautiful sunny day in downtown Toronto. Three straight out of the strike zone to start for Barrios facing Luis Renjifo. Was a 224 batting average coming into this plate appearance, and there is the first strike. Renifo has been a lot more patient this year as far as working walks. Last year, he's already had more walks this season than he had the entire season last year for Renifo. He's had some pretty good numbers in his career against Brios, also. Everyone found back to the screen. Now, Jose Barrios missed with those first few pitches, Brendan, that you talked about. Arm side, up and away. Danny Jansen, the catcher, looks to me like he slid a little bit more middle in with his target, trying to help Jose do it. Those are subtle things that good catchers will do back there. Danny's very good at his craft. Coming inside this time. 3-2, and that one's ripped foul down the right field line. It's amazing when you, uh, you're a batter and you've had some confidence and success against even a very, very good pitch, pitcher like Barrios, how you just feel good in the batter's box. And there's other guys you can, you know, to be facing, and even if they're not a top-quality pitcher on the mound, that you just don't see the baseball well out of hand. And we saw that yesterday with Mickey Moniak against Alec Manoa. He did not see it. They were 92 mile hour fastballs. He was swinging right through them, which is surprising. Another 3-2, and this one is fouled down the left field line and over towards the seats and running out of room. Is with Merrifield. Well, we showed Shohei Otani standing there in the on-deck circle. It makes this an important at-bat. You'd prefer to face him with the bases empty. I think that goes without saying. And I think the comment I made about Danny Jansen, this is where, as a catcher, how I feel you're really doing everything you can to help your pitcher retire this hitter right here because you don't want Otani coming up to bat with anybody on base. That guy sure doesn't. <laughs> So the eighth pitch of the at bat to start the game and it's a hot shot that gets by Espinal into the right field. Again another good swing a good at bat for Renhifo overall saw a lot of pitches and Shohei Otani seeing all those pitches that Barrios is throwing even though the numbers are there you still like to see the movement of the pitch whether it's a fastball or even that slur. He's on that one again Renhifo a lot of confidence a good swing against him again now now four for five against him in his career. That's pretty good. Pretty good ovation for Shohei Otani here in Toronto as he makes his way into the batter's box for the first time this afternoon. And 
He takes a strike of the knees to start the at bat. Might be quicker to go through the categories he's not leading in Major League Baseball. <laughs> but you can see how many Angels fans or fans in Toronto that have become Angels fans because of Shohei Otani. And he's quickly behind in the count, nothing in two. What about even Mike Trout standing up to watch Shohei Otani in the dugout? <laughs> That's the ultimate, isn't it? Yes. Not just your teammate, but another one of the best players in the world. Two soft pitches from Barrios to start with backdoor breaking ball and then the changeup. And I can see him staying soft yep. and away to Shohei the rest of this at bat. First three months of the year, Shohei Otani really struggled with the changeup. He was getting thrown a ton of it, but he's made an adjustment from June on as far as changeups. 0-2 to Otani. Hit in the air to shallow left field with Merrifield battling the sun and is able to make the catch. That's something you see outfielders do quite a bit. They turn their body to give them a better chance to be able to get a good read on the baseball. You can have your sunglasses, you can have your glove to shade the sun, but it's a, a turning of the body that allows them to be able to get a better read on that and going into the outfield. Merrifield plays a lot of left field, he plays a lot of second base, so two different sides of the field. He's got the glasses on, but look at that angle. You'll oftentimes see an outfielder put their glove or hand up to block it, but he had it under control. I just thought he was trying to make sure if he missed, it didn't hit him in the face. <laughs> this one fouled away by Mickey Moniak. Batting behind Shohei Otani. It's an important spot in the Angels lineup, and Moniak has, for a guy who really struggled in Philadelphia, is thriving in Anaheim. Yeah, I mean, he's so comfortable being back in Southern California and what he has done in big moments. He's had a lot of big moment hits for the Angels this season. One ball and one strike to Moniak with Renhifo. On first base, 18 game hit streak snapped yesterday for Mickey Moniak. It was the fourth longest streak in the major leagues this season. Went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts yesterday, and this time he rips one into right field. That's a base hit. Ran Hefo rounding second. He'll make it to third without a play. And two hits in the inning for the Angels have them with runners on the corners and only one out. And right away, you're up at a spot where we talked about in the opening how the Angels have hit or haven't hit quite yet in this series with runners in scoring position. Nice job of going down and getting that off-speed pitch. He's been seeing a lot of those this season, although the Jays have been successful throwing fastballs by him. Phil Nevin had a lot of good things to say about Mickey Moniak this morning when we spoke with him, and that swing right there speaks volumes. That's a good changeup down and away, yeah. and I'm with you, Mark. They were elevating the fastballs against him yesterday. A little surprised that they kept going down. Question is, can the Angels break through in this situation? That has been the struggle so far in this series as Mike Moustakis misses on the first pitch. Just two runs in the series, a Otani home run on Friday night, and the unfortunate Taylor Ward hit by the pitch yesterday with the bases loaded. I guess the Angels probably only have, would prefer to have one run instead of the two they have in this series based on that outcome. But right now, they are 0 for 17 in the series and have struck out nine times with runners in scoring position. Moustakas good career numbers against Brios too. Two home runs batting 300 against him. And he's been really a big spark plug since coming over in that trade with Colorado. Something down in the zone looking for a ground ball. Jose's got the sinker that he'll go down on the way to lefties. He's got the changeup. Everything going down. That helps the ground ball possibility just because the hitter will come over top and catch the top of the baseball and pound it into the ground. And one thing Moustakas did really well in the series against the Tigers, he had a lot of shots to left center field, especially on a count like this where you expect either something soft away or that sinker down and away. On the inside corner, didn't get the call. And the count two and two. That pitch right there is a big pitch for Jose Barrios. We're going to see it a lot with all of the left-handed hitters in the lineup. He had a lot of balls just like that called against the Dodgers in his last start. And I talked to him about that, and I said, I love the approach. You can't change it. That's how you have to pitch these lefties. And he agreed. So I think we'll see a lot of those today. Yeah, you have to keep it. If you're going to throw a changeup away, a sinker away, you have to keep minus on something on the inside part of it. Even if you're not comfortable pitching inside, as long as if you miss, it's off the plate in and not out over the plate. Renahifo at third, Moniak at first. The 2-2 two -two. popped him up foul ground in between third and home and the catcher Danny Jansen is able to shed the mask and make the play. It's a big out for Jose Barrios and the Blue Jays. Yeah, that's that struggles with runners in scoring position. Moustakas has been so good for the 
Angels in that spot. But right now, that pop-up in the infield, it's, it's, I mean, it pop-up to the catcher is a tough one. It's a tough play for a catcher. Danny had to go a long ways for that. But with the left-handed hitter, the third baseman Chapman's playing way over there towards shortstop. So good job by Danny taking over there as a catcher. You're going for that ball, but you're waiting for the third baseman to call you off. I'm always running in there as a pitcher <laughs> trying to make that play. I've always That's that one chance. You no, know, we will get in your way if you want to run in there and help out. <laughs> There's the Angels catcher, Matt Thice. And the first pitch is outside for ball one. How oh, far Chapman is off the line there. With the left-handed hitter, the third baseman's going to be way off the bag. So I think Danny's very aware of that, knowing something to his left. He's going to have to take it, and he did. Okay, well, this is already a big moment in the game for the Angels. When you're struggling with runners in scoring position, you got to find a way to be able to get them home. One way or the other way, you got to find a way to get a hit, get a lead here. Against the Jays who played very, very well. And that's why the Mustaka set bat is so big because we all know it's tough to get a hit yeah. with two outs. You want to try to do that damage with one out so many different ways so you can score. That one catches the corner. It's two and one to Matt Theis. Angels come in to this game 243 batting average with runners in scoring position, sixth worst in Major League Baseball. You mentioned 0 for 17 in this series. 0 for 18 now if you. Throwing the Moustakis at bat. Runner goes from first, swung on and missed. A throw to second. No tag applied as Moniak was able to get the foot in there. It was interesting there, too. I, I still think they were trying to draw that throw. And if, it, if that throw gets by and gets into the fourth second base, Renhifo, and you see Bill Hasselman talking to Renhifo there, you, you want to be going on that one, especially in that spot. I was almost a little surprised that the Blue Jays were throwing down. That's a good pick by Bo Bichette. That ends up in center field or even off of his glove, the run will score. So now a hit could score two here in the top of the first inning. Barrios facing Matt Theis. And he got him. Barrios reaches back his first strikeout of the day, ends the first inning, and strands two Angels in scoring position. Three-year-old Tyler Anderson in his first season with the Angels. Yeah, he's fastballs about 88 to 93 range. He'll throw a changeup, cutter, occasional slider, curveball, and a sweeper. But also, when last game out there, the last couple times out for Tyler Anderson, he's take a look at the Statcast 3D power by Google Cloud. His pitch arsenal four seamer, 35 percent, 34 is his changeup cutter at 24 percent. But his changeup was down. When his changeup was down, he's very, very effective. With Merrifield going after the first pitch and lifting it out to Trey Cabbage in center. One pitch, one out for Tyler Anderson. Here's the rest of that Blue Jays lineup as Bo Bichette strolls to the plate for the Blue Jays. Well, in this Blue Jays lineup against Anderson, they faced him back in early April, and they touched them up three home runs off Anderson. Chapman got him. Bo hit a two-run homer in the third inning on a fastball, and Anderson threw a lot of fastballs to the Blue Jays that game. I was surprised by that. I don't doubt we see more elevated fastballs like we saw to Whitfield. 
and maybe even more of those changeups. And the thing, the changeup down is important. That cutter inside, and he's really found his changeup grip. He had a tough time being consistent with it early on, but the last few times out, when he's getting some ground balls, which he hasn't got a lot of them this season, but compared to last season when he was an all-star, he got a ton of ground balls. Obershet, he was facing 318, the AL leader in batting average at his 41st multi-hit game of the season yesterday. He fouls this one off. Uh, Joe, it's not as easy as he makes it look, is it? That swing right there epitomizes Bo Bichette. It doesn't matter if the pitcher's throwing 90 miles per hour or 100 miles per hour. He gets that deep barrel turn. He can wait so long for the baseball just because he's gifted with such great hands that it allows him to be on almost every pitch. And yesterday he had two hits on pitches that were below the strike zone, both break balls, pretty good at bats. I mean, you're throwing that as a pitcher, you get a swing like that, you're feeling pretty good, but he was on it yesterday. Great plate coverage. I think if you look at his moves in the box, when he's got that big leg kick and the really way he torques his body. Hey, look, another hit. Imagine that. A single for Bo Bichette. As he continues to rack up the hits. Bo goes two-strike approach against Anderson here. No leg kick, and he will do that on a very rare occasion. It might be the particular pitcher that he's facing, maybe anticipating more off-speed to give himself more time just to think about staying back. There is a lot going on in the batter's box, but there's a lot going on between his ears. A very smart, smart young hitter. And I, I would think as the game progresses, you got to try to get him up, upstairs with pitches because he's really been good on pitches down so far. I would love to be an opponent's team's scouting meetings. How are we going to pitch to Bo Bichette? I mean, for me, I would I would pepper fastballs up and away and then try to get him in even more swing mode and then maybe go that change up from a lefty or the slider away to get him to chase. He will chase, and that's what you've got to get him to do if you think you got a chance. 142 hits now on the season for Bo Bichette. Only Luis Arise has more in all of Major League Baseball. Think about it in this day and age, uh, the pitching at uh, the velocity and the spin and di the different pitchers during the course of the game. That's an amazing amount of hits for Bo Bichette. So Vladimir Guerrero Jr. takes a pitch on the inside corner. Two balls and a strike to Guerrero. 268 on the season for Guerrero. See where he ranks among the Blue Jays, but those home run numbers down from what we have grown to expect from Vlad Jr. Seems like he's hit the ball on the ground a little bit more this year, too. He's hitting 14 ground ball double plays this year. His MVP caliber season, and Shohei Natani remembers that one as well, was next level. His moves in the box were just tremendous. Bichette got a great jump, and Guerrero pokes it out into center. And Bichette will make it to third with ease. And Guerrero started to wander off first base. We'll head on back with a single. So that's two hits already in this game by the Jays against Tyler Anderson on this changeup. And if they stay on that pitch like Vladdy did right there, that's an excellent piece of hitting for a right-handed hitter against a lefty like Anderson. If you try to pull that pitch, it's going to be a ground ball to the pull side. I think because the runner's going to Bichette, it slowed him down on a swing. He was just making contact with that. That was a, That's a perfect scenario to put on. Not necessarily with a hit and run, but, it, but it's a stop. you see him running, you just shorten up your swing and make contact on a changeup. Here's Matt Chapman, and he swings and fouls one back on the first pitch. Mark, you were talking earlier about the Blue Jays and their first pitch swinging. Do you see where that pitch was? Fastball, center cut. That's when you want to be doing damage to the first pitch. I think when the Blue Jays have gotten out of their plan on occasion, they'll swing at that first pitch, but it's on the outside edge and roll it over or pop it up and get themselves out. Swung at the second pitch, too, and Chapman behind, nothing in two. Still think you, know, you look at Matt Chapman, he's really good on secondary pitches. I think he ride fastballs up, especially if it's on the inner half and up. Out over the plate, he could do some damage right center. His hottest zone is down and in, and if I'm Anderson, I'm staying away from it. Long hold before the 0-2. This one fouled back in our direction. Oh, that almost got up here. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I thought we were getting a souvenir. I think I don't remember it was either I think it was last year the one a baseball came flying in here. I was shocked because that feels like I'm in a different area code up here. <laughs> it's pretty high. <laughs> Another 0-2. That one buzzes the tower. Well, you called it, Mark. They're elevating. Yeah. They're trying to finish him off up. 
He had two good swings at the first two fastballs yeah. in this at bat, and I think probably pitcher and catcher both, you're thinking, we better get it up there a little bit more. Yeah, it's got to at least be on the middle, middle in. Out over the plate, it's going to be a tough one against him. That one bounced in there, two balls and two strikes. Angels had this same scenario in the top half of the inning. Runners on the corners and one out could not break through. Blue Jays here after Amerifield fly out in the first pitch of the game. Back to back singles by Bichette and Guerrero. And now Chapman who homered on Friday against Lucas Giolito. Facing Anderson in a 2 2. Now the count runs full. I still think your best spot right here is you just got to trust. You can hit your spot with a fastball and elevate a fastball right here. Big moments coming early in this one as they throw over and chase Guerrero back. We've cut down on the pickoff so much they still get booed every time. Huh? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> And there's two throws over. <laughs> that's that's interesting because Vladdy not necessarily a base stealer, but now he can take off possibly first move, and it would be yep. a real gamble for Anderson to go over there. If he goes, he has to pick him off, or it's a buck. Comes to the plate, and Chapman stays alive. He's got a shot at that fastball in that location. He had a pretty good swing at it. He's got to be, even though 3 2. You want to be close enough to the strike zone. Matt Chapman is going to be in swing mode here. Run producers like to be able to get the guy home. Yeah. So you're more apt to chase something at his own. An up fastball has a shot. He will take his walks, but he will also expand. Swung on and missed, and he strikes out Chapman. At 93. Usually he's going to be about 88 91 he went upstairs and that's the one you have to try to get with and if I'm Anderson I'm guessing he just went up there and thought if I miss and it's ball four, oh well but I can get the swing and miss and he got it I've always believed when you get a big out like at this first pitch to the next batter is the toughest one because I'm a hitter this is the time I'm going to be aggressive and George swings it right through it and George Springer behind nothing in one and there's our first Pitch swinging conversation. A very aggressive team, the Blue Jays, but it's a changeup down and away yeah. on the edge of the zone. You're looking for something in the heart of the plate. Good movement on that pitch. A lot of times you're thinking of as a, as a hitter that pitcher made such a good pitch to get that strike out, you're kind of relaxed. And I, I, as a hitter, I've talked to guys in the dugout, that's when I'm going to be even more aggressive because I think that's a chance where he might leave one over the middle. He threw a perfect changeup. That's a veteran on the mound, though. That's one of the best changeups he's thrown, yeah. absolutely. It's up to George Springer, who, yeah, is hitting fifth here today. He's been moved out of that customary leadoff spot as he's going through some serious struggles right now at the plate. 0 for his last 24, 1 for his last 34. So serious that John Schneider and his staff came up with a little bit of a lineup adjustment. That's why we're seeing Whit Merrifield now up in the leadoff spot. And George dropped down. 2 1, hit well to center. Back on it is Cabbage, and onto the warning track, makes the catch. Both teams threaten in the first. Both pitchers get out without any runs.
Today, Taylor Ward took an Alec Manoa 91 mile an hour fastball right to the face. He has been placed on the 10 day IL with facial fractures. And it was just awful to be here in this park. And you can see the concern on everybody's face. And Phil Nevin, who was suspended yesterday, was unable to be down there in the dugout. And he said that part really hurt him not to be able to be there on the field with this guy. He's such a player's manager. He feels for what his players go through positively and negatively. And that spot right there, he wants to be there. It's almost as if he would be a father figure to Taylor Ward. And it was tough for him not to be there. And I think that feeling was all over the field. We saw the reaction of Alec Manoa right away as an opposing pitcher. You see that and your your heart just drops. We had Blue Jays infielders down on one knee. Everybody's just kind of froze in the stadium. You could hear a pin drop in here. Everybody scared for Ward. And Alec Manoa was able to reach out and get a hold of Taylor Ward later on that night at the hospital. That was great to see that, be able to communicate with him how bad he felt about that and how sorry he was. Wanna be the last pitch he threw in the game yesterday. Most of those incidents in baseball you're talking you know teams are going to go at it after and you're talking about bench clearing brawls and all these things but this was one of those times where both teams were just scared for the player and unfortunately it's an inherent risk in this game. Now it's a fair ball down the left field line off the bat of Hunter Renfro takes a nice kick off the wall and Renfro will have to hold it first. He has some pretty good numbers as a right handed batter against Barrios not many right handed batters in this lineup but he's had some numbers against him. And he stays on that baseball and he's been swinging the bat well now four for eight against Barrios. And we talked about the outfield defense of the Blue Jays how that was a focus in the offseason. It wasn't necessarily Whit Merrifield I was talking about. He was more about Dalton Varsho and Kevin Kiermeyer. But Whit does a great job here getting to this ball quickly. If you get to the ball and throw it quickly a lot of times that run or it'll freeze him and Renfro stopped at first. Remember that home field advantage you know that kind of a kick off the wall if you're an opposing team you don't know if it's going to get around that corner if it gets by it's got a chance being inside the park home run so three hits already against Jose Barrios for the Angels their first time through in the number seven hitter Eduardo Escobar now at the plate 703 career ERA for Barrios against the Angels so there's confidence in the hitters and there's some doubt if you're a pitcher even though he got through that first inning there's still doubt in your mind and if you're a pitcher, Mark, do you know those numbers? Oh, yes. <laughs> every ballpark, every hitter, every you, team. Are you looking at the schedule when your yes. start is? Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Always. Here you see his last eight starts against the Angels. Five losses, over seven in the ERA. But he is squeezing one more start into the month of July. It's been a good month for him. He has not allowed more than two earned runs in any of his last four starts this month. He is 0-1 personally, but Blue Jays are 3-1 in his four starts. 1.93 ERA in the month of July. Looking for his first win since the 24th of June. He gets a strike on Escobar. Renfro aboard at first. 3-1 pitch is off the outside corner. And it is ball four and runners on first and second to start the inning. Well, last year wasn't what the Blue Jays were expecting after they signed Barrios to that seven-year, $131 million extension. Worst season since his rookie year statistically. Still won 12 games, but gave up more hits than anyone in baseball this year, putting up some of the best numbers of his career, exactly what the Blue Jays were hoping for. The word he used to me back in spring training the focus and the tweaks that he made was direction his direction to home plate. He felt last year at times he was oftentimes pulling off the baseball you know Mark that front side leaks on you and then the arm trails. And he said of course that gives the hitter a better look at the baseball a longer look. The ball flattens out it leads to inconsistent release points he went on and on and on I'm sure there was a lot of work put in in the offseason. You even see his stance right there. The glove is now lower by his belt. It's a bit of a closed stance. Yeah, really shocked when the Jays got him in that trade. I was like, oh, that, that is huge. I've always been a big fan of Barrios. His stuff is outstanding. I love the way he competes. I love the fact that he's out there deep in the games. And sometimes, you, you know, when you don't make your pitches, and, and if you have this little mechanical thing where you give the hit, hitting is the hardest thing. We talked about that, Brendan, yeah. earlier. Hitting is so hard. But if you give the hitter a chance to see the baseball out of your hand a little longer by opening that front shoulder, you have a shot as a hitter. And he strikes out Trey Cabbage for the first out of the inning. 
Good sharp breaking ball and that's a result of being in sync mechanically. Good fluent delivery. We saw Jose last year bounce around with his positioning on the pitching rubber from the third base side to the first base side and go back and forth. We see him now settling in on the first base side of the pitching rubber. Now against these lefties that can help you get that fastball inside on them to that side of the plate. It can also help you keep the sinker on the plate so it's not taken off missing arm side. Velasquez tries to bunt puts it off the screen and the one thing you notice when his delivery that front foot is landing pointing right towards the target when you, you, you tilt it off you, you fly open your foot is turned towards the first base side of the mound you just want to be pointing right towards the target never easy to try to bunt against Matt Chapman by the way that, that's <laughs> that he covers so much ground you see Barrios on that first base side of the pitching rubber when he comes set it's a bit of a closed stance closed being your left leg is a little bit more forward toward third base the third base line than your right leg that's different from last year does it seem like a tiny little adjustment yes but I'm sure Mark how many of those did you make yeah. in your career yeah you have to especially when you, you start your arm starts dragging through the zone now that's a pretty good bunt he bunts away from Chapman and the ball is fielded in fair ground by Barrios, who then steps on the bag, but both runners advance. And what you're trying to do there, if you're Velasquez, you're trying to get it by the pitcher and force Vlad Jr. to field that baseball. See, Vlad's going right to the base. He knows Barrios is a really good athlete, and he get off the ground, uh, get off that mound quickly. I always had the conversation with my first baseman. I got every bunt there. Don't worry about me. I'm going to fall that way anyhow. You stay back. I want someone at the base just in case. But he got over there quickly to be able to make that play himself. And I think you made a very good point. Jose is an excellent fielder, an excellent athlete, and that helps be another defender out on the field. All right, another big moment early in this game for the Angels. Trying to break on through. Renfro at third, Escobar at second. Two outs in the inning for Luis Renjifo, who singled his first time up and has had success against Barrios. And it's one and one after the big swing and miss. He's had success, but you're not going to pitch around him with Mr. Mm. Rotan. <laughs> Who's that on that? <laughs> so first base is open. You're not going to. No. It doesn't matter how it's a success. It doesn't matter. You're uh, you're ask, going after. Ask Mac Chapman who he pitched to right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had some opinions on Friday night. Shared those with his manager. Let's Jose has been much better recently against left handed hitters and when I asked him about that not necessarily about the pitches and all he talked about his focus mentally he really is trying to bear down against these lefties knowing it had been a weakness for him one two inside as Renfro able to get out of the way he's got good life on his fastball too early on especially I, on the inside the lefties I don't doubt that he goes right back in there we'll see after starting the breaking balls early in this at bat one thing for Renifo, he is susceptible to that break a ball down and in, though. Batting from the left side. Count runs full. That one. <laughs> yeah. And that was a good one. Yes. That was a pretty good take. You're going to miss. That's where you want to miss down. That's a strike for a long time. That's that strike to ball, breaking ball. Excellent pitch by Brios, but even better job laying off. A 3 2 to Renhifo. Swung on and hit in the air out to center field. Dalton Varsho underneath it, and he makes the catch to end the inning. Second straight inning. The Angels have left two on the bases.
Planted by Uber One. Down to the dugout. Ahmed Farid with Phil Nevin. All right, Phil, your offense so far, are you happier with the fact that you're getting a lot of guys on base hitting the ball hard or more upset with the fact that you're leaving guys on base? Well, I guess that goes twofold. And, uh, we're getting on base and, and, and swinging at some good pitches early. We got to be a little better with our runners in scoring position. We also saw Taylor Ward get hit by the pitch yesterday, went to the hospital. I know you were there with him yesterday. You saw him, talked to him. What can you tell us about his mood and, and maybe an update on him? He's in good spirits. You know, we, we said before he's got some, he's busted up pretty good, some fractures in his nose and, and, uh, and, and, and cheekbone there, but he's in good spirits. He was smiling with me last night as best he could anyway. And uh, good news is the eye, eye looks good. So we'll get the swelling down and, you know, see what the next step is. But uh, I think overall we got good news out of the outcome. Thanks, Phil. All right, thanks. All right, thanks to Phil Nevin and our best wishes out to Taylor Ward. Again, your concern is with the eye. The eye got good news. Uh, it's everything around it that is. I'll tell you what, he was swinging the bat very, very well in the month of July. It's a big loss for the Angels at this time, especially when you're dealing with all the injuries they already have. As far as no Trout, no Rendon, no Girori in there. Three dynamic right-handed batters in the lineup not available and Logan Ohapi who not a lot of people got a chance to watch but he's an outstanding young catcher he'll be back soon too as I was preparing for the Angels coming to town in this series I was astounded at looking at the injury list because the Blue Jays have been very very fortunate in that regard and I look over and talking to Phil Nevin this morning I, I can't imagine how you operate when you're losing all these players like when I look at some of these other teams especially the Angels I can't imagine how the Blue Jays operating right now without Bichette without Springer without your closer and now he is out but it's very difficult so you just got to try to tread water as much as you can a dribbler in front of the plate that is handled by Thice. Hey, what Matt Thice has done a nice job behind the plate he hadn't done a whole lot of catching in his career he's drafted it in the first round out of Virginia as a catcher didn't catch a whole lot his first start as a catcher last year, he called a shutout. This 11 career starts behind the plate this season because of the injury to Logan O'Hoppy. He's been forced into catching a lot more. And it's not easy. You know this. When you haven't caught a lot, your legs are, are worn out. Even yeah. then your back gets a little bit slower, too, when you catch so much. That's probably the most difficult part of being a backup catcher is you're just not in there enough. So you have to stay sharp in other areas. And then you get playing more. And sure, you can feel it. But the guy knows all about it. <laughs> Played a lot of different positions. He was another 1 1, just like Mickey Monia yep. got in center field. Okay, the plate knows about it too, Danny Jansen. Yes. He's been swinging the bat well, but you mentioned the injuries. With Ward going on the IL, that is now 17 players on the injured list for the Angels, most in Major League Baseball. And obviously, when guys like Mike Trout are on that list, it's only amplified. And I think when you have guys like that, it's a pop-up in the infield. It should be the second out. Every Sunday morning, Willie Geist sits down with the biggest names and news in pop culture. Next week, catches his interview with one of the NBA greats, the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry, on NBC and streaming on Peacock. Don't forget, you can stream today live every morning right here on Peacock. And I think going back to what the Angels have done in, in, with runners in scoring position, you don't have an Anthony Rendon because there's times when he's up there with runners in scoring position, he'll hit a routine ground ball to short or second to get that run home. You know, a lot of young guys, it's different. There's a base hit in the left field by Santiago Espinal. What about him in this series so far? Where's he coming from here? Come on, Joe. He's coming from not playing a whole lot <laughs> and getting inserted into a lineup. But, you know, you get down to the bottom of the lineup, it's easy even as a catcher calling a game. And look at the situation right here. You get two quick outs. You're in the eighth spot. You're throwing a first pitch fastball, hoping he hits a ground ball at somebody because then now you start the next inning with the number nine hitter, which is critical before they turn the lineup over. But... Credit Espinal. He pounds that ball into left field, much like he pounded one into the seats yesterday. Number nine hitter today is Dalton Varsho. One of the best number nine hitters in the game. Kevin Kiermeyer has the day off today. So it is Varsho and his 211 batting average coming to the plate with Espinal at first. It's been a struggle for Dalton, that, Dalton that's for sure. Coming over from the Diamondbacks in a, in a big trade because the Blue Jays also sent Lourdes Gurriel Jr. and their top catching prospect, a big time prospect in Gabriel Moran. You know, that prospect is, I call it the P word, you just never know, but Dalton just hasn't found that stroke offensively. Power guy, he's hit 27 home runs last year for the Diamondbacks, and he still shows that on occasion, but there have been some holes in his swing, and it's mostly been 
up in the zone. He's a dynamic defender too. So I mean, Excellent. with having with that power, it's he, he was a big pickup. He, uh, at least looking from the outside, looking in, and I'm like, wow, that's a great pickup by the Jays. Two of the best outfitters in the game: Dalton Varsho and Kevin Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer gets the day off today. You just slide Varsho over to center, and it's a wonderful thing defensively. This one is poked in the air to left field. Charging hard is Moniak, and he's able to get there and make a sliding catch to end the inning. He's made an, an incredible amount of plays, whether he's in right, center, or in left field. He's going over the wall for a couple home runs, Robin. Shohei Otani set to lead off the third inning for the Angels here in Toronto. Might be the best player in baseball. And so Tani's world, we're just living in it. He leads Major League Baseball in nearly every offensive category. And then, oh, yeah, he, he pitches every six days to uh, 185 opponent batting average, the best in all of baseball. And you want to win some easy money, got to put a lot down. Uh, your AL MVP two years ago, the runner up last year only because of an historic season by Aaron Judge. And he's going to win it again this yeah, year. I mean, it's unbelievable, especially had his first career complete game shutout just the other day in Detroit. A one hitter, 111 pitches thrown for Shohei. That's just part of the story as That's he lines a base hit into left field. So the adjustments he makes on change up. First pitch change up. Then he got another change up right back and he stayed with it and went the other way. He's not up there just trying to hit a home run every swing. He's trying to make good contact. He's got a batting average coming over 300 this season. His best. Look how he stayed. That baseball was almost in the catcher's mitt, Joe, and he stayed on that ball going the other way. Let's it travel so deep. It's off the plate away. The difference being it's up a little bit. If that ball's down, maybe you get a different result, but you can't make a mistake. That's not a mistake. It's off the plate away. But if you make a mistake to Shohei, you make it there where it's going to stay in the ballpark, and I think Barrios will take it. He can live with that one. Matt cool. Chapman, too, don't you think? <laughs> we keep bringing up Matt Chapman. Yeah, you name. got to. He's, he's an OC guy. He might be the uh, bench coach before the end of this game. <laughs> I like the little smirk there to Guerrero from Otani when he got the first base and took off towards second. If this one is launched in the air and coming down towards Springer. Some good hang time on that fly ball from Moniak, but it's out number one. Well, with Mickey Moniak, and he's been so good, you do have to remember how different it is. And Otani is going to see very minimal pitches to hit. But when Mike Trout comes back into the lineup, that's a whole different level of protection for Otani. Yeah, and Otani gets a lot of pitches to see because Mike Trout, every, every bit is good and more, even more dynamic because he's he's hit and been successful in his entire career, hitting the ball to all parts of the field, whether righties or lefties. And let's keep that pitch in mind for later in this ball game. It was an elevated fastball to Moniak, got him to pop up. Remember that first at bat, we were talking through the whole at bat, and what do you do? He had a change up for a base hit. Blue Jays had success up yesterday, and I bet they stay up there if it comes up in another key situation later. Mike Moustakis lines it in the center for another base hit. Boy, a lot of hits, a lot of traffic for the Angels in this game. They're just looking for that one big hit, get that run across. 
good at bat there. I mean, that's another one of those backdoor all speed just went right got up the middle. We were talking about that, Brendan, in between breaks. The best thing you could do, and you notice, Joe, is a hitter. When you're in those RBI situations, you think middle of the field. Your, your chances of getting hit increase because there's more space out there. But also a pitcher loses confidence when he's up there using the whole field or letting the ball travel. If you're trying to pull the ball, I always felt, I got you. Right. But if you're, if you're staying on the ball, go in the middle of the field, I might have some problems. Those are the worst guys to face that stay in the middle of the field because the bat's in the hitting zone longer, generally speaking, for most hitters. And when the bat's in the hitting zone longer, you can handle more pitches, be a tougher out. Matt, thanks. Take strike one. Angels had two on and one out in the first inning, did not score. They had two on and nobody out in the second inning and did not score. And here they have runners at first and second with one away for Matt Theis, who struck out with a couple of runners in scoring position his first time up. Two strikeout victims so far for Jose Barrios. And if I'm Barrios, I can't be too upset with the way this inning has unfolded. Great piece of hitting by Otani. Great piece of hitting by Moustakis. And again, ground ball type pitcher. He's one pitch away from getting out of this thing. And we can get Feist to pound something into the turf. 1-1 one, one is ripped foul. That's one of those pitches, too. When you see somebody, you hear them like, ooh, and ah. Oh. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good purpose pitch. He's out in front, pull the foul. It allows you to get the two strikes here. Even though you think, as you're watching this game, oh, he's on that one. No, he's out in front. So now you have options if you're Barrios. You can go run, run, run a fastball in on him, or you can fade his change up even further off the plate down and away. I so like now his, you got to make that adjustment. I like his two-seamer in to lefties. Again, if you miss, miss in, and then you can come back soft away. Always thinking a pitch ahead. He went back out there. That was a pretty good pitch. That's a great take. Vice has been pretty good with runners in scoring position this season, 286. So he's the guy you want up here in this spot, even though a lot, not a lot of experience coming in this year is the amount of a bats he has, but he's been pretty productive in that spot, slugging at 408 with runners in scoring position. 2-2 two -two fouled away. So that's interesting, too. See where Danny Jansen was set up. That was supposed to be inside, and if you miss in off the plate, but it came right back over to the middle. Now, if I'm a hitter, if I'm nice, I'm not sure what he was doing with that pitch. I just know that I got a center cut fastball. So I would almost come back in there yeah. as a catcher, help Barrios get this thing back in there, and really give him that fist bump and say, get it in there right now. 2-2. Two -two. Again, that's a pretty good job at fouling that one off. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. It, it, and the thing it's hard for a guy, especially those uh, quite a few sinkers, is to be comfortable enough to throw that inside. You have to almost throw with the Greg Maddox, like throw it at the left-handed batter's hip and bring it back in there. Otherwise, if it starts on the corner in, it's going to drift that over the plate, and that's damage. The only thing I don't like about this at bat for Brios is he not has not gotten that good fastball inside yet. Get him aware of that pitch. Came that too far in. And that hit Thice and will load the bases. It's a pretty good at bat for Matt Thice that works himself on base. Shoei Otani got hit in the back foot yesterday. Same type of pitch, right? Yep. Slider down and in by Alec Manoa. Remember they had that conversation in the All-Star game, and John Smoltz was saying, why don't you hit him in the back foot with a slider? And he ended up doing it. That's why they call it a back foot slider. Yes. <laughs> As your kid expressed an interest in baseball, if they're ready to hit a home run, you can find local baseball clubs in your area by visiting sportsengine.com slash baseball the resources you need to get started are all in one place visit sportsengine.com the home of youth sports Brendan these are the moments right now where Pat Talbert former team and obviously here with the Jays throughout the years he was one of the all-time greats with the bases loaded and I always ask him why were you so good he goes all I was thinking was one run see so many hitters think four runs he's thinking something up the middle I'm just thinking getting one run home anything more is a bonus Pretty good pull hitter here in Renfro, too. I imagine you want to stay away like that, but keep it out there. Less damage. Renfro singled his first time up. Has an opportunity with the bases full here and one out. He's behind 0-2. Stay out there. If I'm Barrios, if I'm Danny Jansen, it might be that sinking fastball out there. It might be the breaking ball, but I'm not sure I even waste my time trying to show a pitch in. No, you're going to stay away slider throughout this at bat. 
0-2 hit in the air to center field. Otani is tagging from third as Varsho makes the catch, throws into third base. It's a sack fly and an RBI for Hunter Renfro. There's your one run. The Angels take the lead. That's exactly what he did. He shortened up. He knew he was going to get a break. The ball was just up enough where he could make contact. Get that one run home approach worked perfectly for Hunter Renfro picking up an RBI on that one, especially when you got two strikes. 45th RBI of the season, but that's an important one to get the job done, making contact there. It's almost as though he conceded. That was a breaking ball out there, but if I'm Barrios, he probably wanted to get out there even more. You don't even want that ball put in play when you've got the hitter 0-2 like that, but that's a nice piece of hitting to cash in a very key run for these Angels with their struggles with runners in scoring position. Late swing there by Escobar is strike one, so Otani starts the inning with a single Comes home to score the first run of the ball game. This is 81st run scored of the season. I mean, he's done everything. It's, yep. it's unbelievable. <laughs> Two singles and a hit batter in the inning. I still say that other day in Detroit where he pitched a one-hit shutout game one and came back in game two and hit two home runs. Arguably the best doubleheader by a baseball player ever. I have no problem saying ever. No. And I've got no. some arguments on social media about no. that. Rick Wise threw a, a no-hitter and hit two home runs, but it was in the same game. Well, granted, that's that's an amazing thing. <laughs> that's an too. amazing game and yes, day, sure. But, but a doubleheader like that, it's unreal. He did all that in a span of four hours and 25 minutes. <laughs> oh, 2 outside a complete game. Yep. You're in an ice bath after yes. that, right? And you, you're, not, you're not going out there and hitting two home runs. Your legs are gone. Your hips are gone. Your arms are gone. And yet you hit a home run in the left field, and then you hit a mammoth home run in the right center. It's just like we always say he's a unicorn, but I don't even know if he's even, even any kind of a human being. This one sliced foul. Get a kick out of watching hitters. We saw Hunter Renfro talking to Otani in the dugout. Now, Renfro's the only righty in the lineup. Usually you'll pick a guy that hits like you, both from the right side or both from the left side. But still exchanging information what was the change up doing to you what was the spin like on the breaking ball they're always looking for more and more information even for that next at bat chase Mustak is back to second and that's not really to pick them off that's to shorten up that secondary lead just in case there's a base hit in the outfield with these arms for the jades in the outfield that would give your guys a shot at a play at the plate if there's a base hit here by escobar One two hit in the air left field long run over there for Merrifield and he's able to get there make the catch and end the inning a lot of traffic on the bases and the Angels finally get a run on the sack fly top of the order coming up in the bottom of the third for the Jays. for you guys here today trying to lead the American League in batting for the third year in a row. What are the small things that he does that impress you the most? I mean, I think just the way he works every day, which people don't really get to see, you know, his routine in the cage, his routine on the field defensively. Um, Two-strike approach, I think, is what sets him apart, really battles with two. 
um, almost takes pride in his foul balls too. So I think the way that he can compete with two strikes is huge. Springer with a deep fly ball at the end of the first inning. I don't know if he thought that was gone. Maybe do we have a, a win situation to monitor in this ballpark with the roof open? I feel like the ball flies a little bit better with the roof closed. Georgie hit that well. Um, I like I like his swings the last couple of bats going back to yesterday and, and first one today. But um, guys definitely appreciate when the roof is closed. I think when they're hitting. Thanks, John. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Merrifield pumps one up to Renfro to start at the bottom of the third inning and. Bo Bichette on cue will make his way to the plate. I was always wondering about that with the roof open as compared to close. I just know this is a pretty good hitter's yard any way you look at it. Yeah. That's a that's a pitcher's perspective, obviously. I, I always felt this was a pretty good hitter's yard, but I never realized that I thought for sure that the baseball would carry even more so with the roof open. It's an interesting conversation. I was a little surprised when John said that because if you come around here on a weekday at 4 30 and watch batting practice with the roof open. There are balls being hit up into the further distances in the 500 type level. I mean, balls are just mashed, and I think it's because that breeze kicks in. But interesting that John said some of the players might rather see it close, maybe travel a little bit better. They get it up into the jet stream. Get it up there to that Kitsako <laughs> seat up there in left field. I always thought with the roof right. open, yes, there'd be more of a jet stream. This year, with the roof open, there have been 60 home runs, closed 47 home runs. Obviously, there are a lot of factors that go into that, but sure. that's the raw data for you. Is that your manager protecting your player on that one? I, I'm doing some <laughs> psychosis right yes. now. I'm thinking, man, yeah. We saw Springer's reaction after he hit that fly ball. He was kind of, geez, what do I have to do? Well, oh, Bichette didn't get anything to hit there. Walks on four pitches. First walk issued by Tyler Anderson. Support your team into the home stretch at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic jerseys, caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Remember this combination last time there was, Bichette was on the move with Guerrero at the plate. You wonder if Anderson will at least make a throw over their first pitch to make him aware he's paying attention to him. Little slide step. Sped it up a bit. Bo was still putting the uh, oven mitt on there when that pitch was released. Well, and if if I'm the Blue Jays, I don't want Vladimir Guerrero Jr. trying to punch one through the right <laughs> side. Like, this is the, the issue here, and the, the power, it is down with Vladi, and I think the swing is a little bit different than we saw a couple of years ago. I don't quite think he's getting to that really good load launch position as efficiently as we've seen in the past. Yeah, Even put, right there, that little leg kick. A couple of years ago when you saw that, it was that body was engaged and he really stayed behind the baseball a little bit better. Yeah, he pulled off and that was a fastball with harder to plate down. That's a pitch I would remember him always crushing the center field. Seems to like the ball up a little bit more. He's done some damage on pitches down in the zone, but it seems to be the place you want to go, especially here when you're trying to get a ground ball maybe. Notice Tyler Anderson calling his pitches. Is that putting that pitch com right there underneath his sleeve on the right bicep? Underneath his sleeve is that ever interesting? That's the first I've seen that. Yeah. Shohei Otani is the same thing. He'll Under do the that sleeve. too. Yeah. Would you have used your own pitch com to no, call I, your game? I just let the catcher just put whatever side down. <laughs> that way I could blame it on him after. Good too. idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't like the shake guys. No, I, I never did. Because I, it, again, some negative thought would get in my mind. Oh, he, he's. I always believe the catcher reads stuff. And seeing the footwork, the hands, if they're gripping the bat, if they're loose on there, what they're trying to do. I'm going with their feel for the game. We already went and prepped two hours before. I'm going with him all the way through. Guerrero rips this one into the alley and left center, but closing on it quickly is Moniak. That ball hung up there a little bit and allowed Moniak to get there, but that was a rocket off the bat of Guerrero. That was well positioned, too, for Moniak to be in that spot off the bat. In this angle, I'm thinking that's that's a double, maybe a run score, but he was playing well over in left center field, able to run that down. Glad he hits the ball as hard as anyone in the game, and the one pitch he does handle up and in, and that's where that fastball went. He barreled it. Yeah, if you look at in this game right here, you have Otani, Chapman, Guerrero. They're is, is up, the, up amongst the leaders as far as hard hit percentage. This one is hit out to right, and there to make the play is Renfro. That was 103.4 off the bat of Guerrero. Uneventful third inning. We go to the fourth, one of the Angels.
Ninth inning in Toronto. Angels with a one nothing lead over the Blue Jays. Brennan Burke, Mark Gubiza, Joe Siddle. And there's the fourth member of our broadcast crew, Mike Trout. Mike, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's start you off with a question that everybody wants to know. When are you going to stop talking to us and get back out there on the field? I'm itching to get back. Uh, don't have exact date, uh, but uh, Atlanta's a big uh, step for me. Uh, I'm going to pick up a bat and see where it goes from there, so... I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully put a glove on here soon um, and uh, hopefully get back out there. And try to you ever be able to work with a, a different batting glove or something potentially as you get back in there? Uh, some paddings uh, they got for. Uh, yeah, they, uh, Mikey's got some padding they can put on the on the inside of the batting glove um, and it protects me a little bit. Just uh, the biggest thing is just like the impact um, and pain tolerance. Um, you know, each and every day, it's it's getting a lot better, so it's uh, it's positive. Well, we're taking a look right now at the last swing you took. Yeah. And it didn't look like much when you when you hear that handmade bone, you think, oh, well, you must have got hit by a pitch, right? But yeah. That's... No, I think uh, you know a lot of people ask me like, hey, were you sore? Or do you feel anything before that? Or do you like even put your knob in in your palm? Because I think that's like the com the common thing, you know, when you. When you hear about the handmate, it's uh, about the the knob being inside that uh, that palm area. But I don't do any of that, and just it was just a freak thing. I think uh, you know, pitch, you know, up and away, and it just happened. It's uh, it definitely uncomfortable. I'll tell you that. Pretty common though, no, Mike. I mean, over the years, yeah. this has been like 30 plus years that I've known this game, and it seems like it's a common hitting injury. Were you familiar with how common it was? Uh, not till after. Uh, <laughs> I know a lot of guys on the team, uh, you know, had the surgery or have had it, they've done it in their career. But, uh, you know, like I said, leading up to I had no handmade injuries or even hand injuries before that, you know, swinging wise. So um, it was, you know, difficult for me, but I'll come back. Hey, Mike, tell Dexter Fowler to get out of your shot. He's trying to hog your face nah, he's time. Good. He's good, man. Man, I'm not even supposed to be in on this. I'm there with this. I'm ear hustling. <laughs> There's a strikeout of Velasquez and quickly two away here in the top half of the fourth inning. Yeah, but you guys were hanging out with dinner last night, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to. So Dexter picked up the tab, right? No, no I should have paid. I nah, came nah. late. I offered. <laughs> <laughs> he made me pick up the tab. You know that. You know that. <laughs> it was good dinner, though. Good dinner. That's so good. Yeah. What was, uh, what was Dexter like as a teammate? Unbelievable, right. man. He was, uh, you know, as soon as... The word got out that we were, we were bringing him over here. You know, obviously Jay up knows him, you know, pretty well. And, um, you know, it was a, that spring training, getting to know him a little bit, go out and, uh, you know, like I said, have dinner and just uh, enjoy not just baseball stuff off the field. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty special to have that, you know, relationship and friendship. So I paid him to say that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, and you he, would think he, he, he would knows up, I'm right behind him. You know, he would have picked up the You <laughs> thought he would pick up the tab. I mean. <laughs> I'm just concerned we have Mike Trout and we're asking him about Dexter Fowler instead of the other way around. Uh, well, everybody knows Trout is a good teammate. Right? I mean, he picks up dinners. And, nah, I'm yeah. just nah, he's a, he, this guy, when, when I first got over here, it was it was great, man. He made me feel like it was at home. And, uh, you know, it, it was a great clubhouse we were in and my locker mate. And, uh -huh. you know, we still we still talk. We, we talk about golf and all that. This one's going to make it all the way to the wall in a double second hit of the day for Luis Renjifo. Here it comes. They're going to put him on. Yeah, that's an automatic walk right here. <laughs> Blame it on Matt Chapman there here, right? Is, look, there it is. <laughs> they shouldn't even brought a bat up there. Yeah. There it goes. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, Dexter, the most important question is, has Trouty made you a Philadelphia Eagle fan yet? No, but hey, last time we went over this, I'm a Cowboys fan, so we battled. Oh, hey, yeah, we right. battled. Hey, he, it's already self-explanatory. You already know the deal. Yeah. You already know the deal with all the, the whole Eagle Cowboy thing. You already yeah. know. Oh, man. Hey, we went to the game in Dallas. We went to the game oh, in he Dallas. Did. He flew. He flew his. He flew his boys out and everything. Got a nice suite. He was like, "Hey, Dix, I know you're a Cowboys fan. Coming to the game." So I was like, "All right, I'll go." I come up after the after the before the. For the uh, kickoff, and I had a Dak jersey on. I was the only cowboy in there, and they all had Eagles jersey on. After the first quarter, it was the quietest box I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, but he did call me because they, they they had revenge. He called me. He was at the game, front row. I called him. He was out there with Meek Mill, and I was like, bro, how is it? He's like, it's good, man. We kicking the Cowboys' butts. <laughs> this one has popped up. Chapman fighting the sun and the screen, and he's able to squeeze it 
and end the threat. Uh, Mike Trout, thank you so much for doing this. We look forward to seeing you back on the field. No problem. Thanks, guys. Brought to you by Budweiser, the iconic American lager, unrivaled taste, pure refreshment. This Bud's for you. Coming up on the 30-year anniversary of that 93 World Series. Touch them all, Joe. The all-time call by the late great Tom Cheek. Second of back-to-back -back World Series wins. The only two World Series appearances since they were founded back in 1977. There was no one better, right-handed batter, to be able to keep a low pitch down and in fair. Most times you'll have to throw that in to pull it foul, you get headed in the count, but he would somehow keep it fair. I, I was amazed how good he was on that. A remarkable moment in Blue Jays history, and it's been a long time, as you said, Brendan. In yeah. 15 and 16, they got back to the playoffs, and this place, let me tell you, was electric. And I know most stadiums get that feel when they get to the postseason, but I think for Blue Jays players, they find out more and more every year that they're playing for a country here. They have an entire country behind them. It's yeah. very unique in Major League Baseball, and that's one of the first things that most players will talk about. This one is hit well to Springer, but there is Renfro. Yeah, it's because the, st the roof's open. <laughs> <laughs> I think George wants it closed. <laughs> yes. He's going to think, wait a minute, I, I see some clouds up there right now. There's potential rain up there. You know, I thought the Blue Jays would have won a World Series back in 85. Well, they were poised to win a World Series back in 85, but look at this. Whoa. Out in game six comes Mark Gubiza. That was like the only four-seamer I think I ever threw in my life. <laughs> Is that a stare down right there? Uh, uh, a lot of hitters didn't like me for some reason. I don't know why. I didn't like them either, though. Uh. The 22-year-old Mark Gubiza facing elimination you came back from down three games yeah. to one won the series in seven won the world series in seven. Yeah, i mean that was I, I remember getting that call from dick houser saying you're starting game six i remember i, I couldn't even breathe <laughs> and george Brett goes hey worst case scenario we're playing golf the next day i said but if we if you win that game we're playing game seven so i'm like all right it helped me relax that night having a veteran like him around was so good him and hal mccray just made me feel pretty good that's a pretty young athletic looking mark Goose. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> oh. look what happened to me now <laughs> Oh, good stuff. How about that? That was the first year the Major League Baseball expanded the championship series from five games to seven. And wouldn't you know, a team down 3-1 comes back to win. That was perfect. And I still think that team for the for the Royals were the first team ever come back back-to-back -back series, obviously three games to one. And I remember even falling behind 2-0 to St. Louis in the World Series and 3-1. to one. And George Brett came into the clubhouse in St. Louis. He goes, we got them right where we want them. And never said another word. We're like, really? Because <laughs> I thought that Jays team was... Arguably one of the best teams I think we've ever faced. If you look at that outfield they had, that was unreal. Their talent level was off the charts. Kirk takes outside. It's one and two. That little hesitation in Anderson's delivery you were talking about earlier you could change that up a little bit. That can really alter the timing and really mess with a hitter. Because you can see Kirk was kind of leaning yeah. a little bit yeah. forward. Oh, yeah. Bottom line is, as a hitter, you're trying to get that baseball read it out of the hand 
and then with the pitch, you know, batter's eye back there. But when you have that slight hesitation, you're already starting to move forward, and, and then you try to keep your hands back long enough, you're unable to do that. Ground ball and a changeup. You know what? Our good friend Bob Costas had quite the scouting report on a young Mark Gubiza back in the day. Can we roll that. How do you think Gubiza, who by his own admission is a hyper young man, how will he react to this kind of situation? Well, Jimmy Sundberg has said that he will have to really hold him down and keep going like this back off a little bit don't be so hyper <laughs> who's calling you yeah. hyper? <laughs> no. do you guys find me hyper right no. now i know no. i've been, I've been known, to, I've known to, i talk a little bit too much and too quickly but uh hyper yeah, yeah probably <laughs> probably still have with a ball in your hand in the playoffs <laughs> the world series <laughs> maybe, yeah, that was maybe. A bit hyper yeah <laughs> Oh, that's great stuff. Uh, that's I never heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of other things said yeah. about me, but that's I guess that's good enough. <laughs> you win game six of the ALCS on your way to World Series, and they're talking about how hyper you are. Yeah, you know, the crazy thing <laughs> is, I, like, when I found out I was going to make that start, I called my dad. He goes, I'm coming up to Toronto. I'm like, well, okay. And he comes, my, my dad, my uncle, and my old Merrick Legion baseball coach, and they're all sleeping in my room. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I got game six. It's elimination game, and they are snoring so loud. But I remember Tom Seaver told me as I talked to him real early in my career, I said, what's, as far as preparation for game, he goes, the most important day for starting pitch is the day before the day before to get proper sleep because you're going to replay the game in your mind the day before. So if you get good sleep two days before, you're going to be fine. So I need it all done because I got about two hours sleep with all the snoring. <laughs> Velasquez throws out Danny Jansen, and it took until the bottom of the fourth inning, but our first one, two, three inning of the day. Still Angels up by one. Beyond the longest active playoff droughts, maybe Aaron Rodgers has something to say about the Jets. Maybe Tage Thompson has something to say about the Sabres. Does Shohei Otani and Mike Trout have something to say about getting the Angels off of this list? Well, getting Trout back in the lineup, which will not be too far away. I really feel that you're going to see Trout. You mentioned Atlanta be able to start swinging the bat. He has been holding a fungo just to get the feel for a bat in his hand. Once he starts swinging it. I'm still thinking by the second week of August you could see him back in there at the very latest. Brandon Drury heading out on a rehab assignment Tuesday. Phil Nevin said today, I mean, getting some of those bats back certainly are going to help. He's been huge for the Angels this yeah. season, and uh, he should be back when they come back and play Seattle in a four game set. First pitch swinging for Moustakis, and this one a tough play for Chapman. He makes it look easy. I saw Perry Manassian down on the field before yesterday's game, and of course, we as the Toronto Roots here and spent some time with the Blue Jays but I congratulated him I said Perry congratulations he kind of looked at me funny I said I'm keeping Otani and going for this thing because I'm a baseball fan too we're all baseball fans and when you take a step back this is what you want to see in this game but the Angels are keeping Otani and they're going to make a couple moves to try to get better they've got some injured guys coming back and making with that to me is what's great for this game get Giolito in that trade with Chicago I mean he's a Bonafide top of the rotation type guy. He's already pitching. He's pitching on the regular five man rotation, four day rest. 
on Wednesday in Atlanta, allowing Shohei to pitch on his normal pitch in that first game back. So having him in, Ronaldo Lopez has been unbelievable. Good bullpen arm. This one grounded to first. <clears throat> They'll make the flip. But the Angels, they're buyers. Really, for the first time since Otani's been here, they're buyers at the deadline. And they go out and get maybe the best starting pitcher not named Shohei Otani that was supposed to be on the market in Lucas Giolito. They get Ronaldo Lopez to help the bullpen. Will we see something else before Tuesday remains to be seen? But you want to see a team go for it. They're five games out of the wild card, and they've got a lot of season left and should get healthier. And yeah, Mike Trout should help. So many people ask me that question. How many times have the Angels been a, a buyer in this time of the year? And I was going back, I'm thinking, I, I don't remember that type of a player bringing in like a Lucas Giolito. I mean, you can see right away. I mean, he got in here basically just, to, just right away before starting that game against the Jays here, the first game of the series, and pitched pretty well in it. I mean, he's thrown a no-hitter in his career. He's been throwing the ball exceptionally well over his last 10 starts. Good Having any part of that rotation is huge. Good inning from Lopez yesterday, too. And, you know, I'm from the Blue Jays side, you see that, and it's like, wow, those yeah. are two nice arms that they've just picked up to get some of these bats back. Maybe it all comes together. I mean, this series is this huge. And, and they're coming in there after that good series in Detroit playing the Jays. And there's all those tiebreaker scenarios because of uh, there's no more 161 game. So you have to have a tiebreaker. Right now, if they did end up tied, the Jays would get in because of the tiebreaker. Yesterday's game was huge yeah. for the Blue Jays because the next tiebreaker is your divisional record. And the Blue Jays have not been good in the AL East. Just seven wins against the AL East this season. There's the first one, two, three inning for Jose Barrios. Comes in the fifth. Twenty twenty three trade deadline special presented by Geico coverage begins Tuesday one Eastern on MLB Network. Uh, that's the hotel out there in center field. That is even full here. There have been great crowds here this weekend influenced by Shohei Otani but sellouts Friday and Saturday and pretty close to it here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in downtown Toronto. That was one hotel room with two Vlad jerseys, two Otani jerseys, and a Joe Carter. Fantastic. <laughs> the Blue Jays have done a fantastic job in this ballpark with all of their renovations. Last winter, they will continue this coming winter. Check swing. And they said he did not go. So 2 0 oh to Santiago Espinal. And Tyler Anderson, he got the one, two, three in the fourth. He's retired five in a row. He's given up three hits. Two of them were in the first inning. He walked one in the third. There's been a lot of traffic around the bases for a one nothing game so far through four and a half innings. And both teams really, you know, even though the Jays have won the first two games this year, both teams have struggled a little bit with runners in scoring position. Espinal pops one into shallow left. Out is Velasquez in his Moniac who makes the catch. 
I started Folds of Honor to help the families of fallen veterans. Today, we celebrate over 44,000 scholarships given to those families. Service never stops, and neither will we. Well, we've been talking about the Angels being buyers at the trade deadline, and as a baseball fan, you love it. As an Angels fan, you have to love it. But the reality is there's only two outcomes that make this a successful ordeal for the Angels, a World Series and or re-signing Shohei Otani. Other than that, they're going to look back and say, well, you, what could you have, have you gotten for Shohei Otani? Well, the big thing is if you do accomplish that one thing, the goal you said, right. the World Series, then it, it makes it a little more comfortable to think that Shohei Otani would love to be part of that for a number of years going forward. Winning is important, but he has emphasized right now, and everyone keeps saying winning means going somewhere else. He said, no, I want to win here with this team. I love the city. I love the, my teammates. I love my coaching staff. He really gets along very well with Phil Nevin. He just wants to win with the Angels. And as an outsider from elsewhere in the league, that's my first question for you, Mark, is we hear so much about the Angels are keeping Otani. They're making a run because then they're going to lose him. That's what we hear around baseball from the outside. I've, Does I've, he have a chance to stay? I've, I've said this from the first day of spring training, and, I, and I'll say it now, and I feel even more comfortable saying it. I think there's an excellent opportunity for the Angels to keep Shohei Otani long term. Wow. You know, I mean, he gets a, ch a chance to play with Mike Trout all these years going forward, too, and, they're, and they respect each other so much. That one is ripped down the right field line by Dalton Varsho. The struggling number nine hitter is going for extra bases, and he was thinking three, but throws the brakes on. He said slightly higher against left-handed pitching, although not a big sample size. He stayed in on this one really well. He put himself into account. Patient. Went up there with that first pitch. He thought about just tracking the baseball on a bunt attempt and then finally got into a 3-1 count. He crushed that. My feeling in watching Dalton swing is he has a tendency to get out around the baseball and off the baseball. The bat's in the zone and out. That pitch was out over the plate in the middle part of the plate. He has had trouble with the ball up and especially the ball in. So good location for him on a 3-1 pitch. It's 110 miles per hour exit velocity. That ball's crushed. Now you got to keep an eye on him. He's got 12 stolen bases. I've always felt good base stealers are very comfortable stealing against a left-handed pitcher. So unless you vary your look back to second base, he might even be on the go here. And it would be a real gamble. You're at the top of the order. You've got Bo coming up. At, I don't think this is a good time to gamble. And if I'm with Merrifield, though, you've got to be aware that you're trying to shoot something the other way. Anderson's going to probably go soft with the changeups, trying to get you to pull something. There's a fastball up in the zone, but as a catcher calling the game, you're trying to get the hitter to ground something to the left side here so he cannot move the runner over. How do you do that? Fastball in or change up away? Well, that's what we're seeing from Anderson this afternoon. It's the guy when you're on the mound you hate facing because he's going to make some contact against you too. So it's tough to get him to swing and miss. 0-2 oh, gets through into left field. Varsho had to hold up, but he's still charging hard as Moniak bobbled the baseball. And it's a tie ball game after the RBI for Whit Merrifield. Got a cutter, but it was down in middle. Stayed on that really well. Look how he keeps his head down on that baseball and then hands through the zone. You said it. Such a good contact hitter, but watch how deep Moniak's playing left field. He's playing very deep and over to the gap, so despite having to freeze, a little bobble there too, but Varsho is an excellent base runner. He gets the wave home, rightly so, from third base coach Luis Rivera. So it is scored a single, an RBI, and the error allows Merrifield to get to second. And they'll now chase this it guy, back. This guy, Mark, will try to steal third with the best of them. Yeah. You go back a number of years now, and Witt is the master at this. Now he has been thrown out a few times this year. So again, you have to be very careful with where you are in the batting order. But he's successful 21 times as Bo Bichette hits one down the right field line over is Renfro in fair territory making the catch as Merrifield tags and goes to third. One of the best arms in the game in the right field. This is too far away to be able to make that even a close play against Merrifield. And again, swing at first pitch. Bichette has had a lot of success, a lot of power on that first pitch. And the Renfro gets it in quickly though, but right there to third base. So you wait a pitch or so that maybe he would have stole. That ends up being a sack fly. 
Yeah, of course, Bo is getting that pitch, and he can handle that pitch very well. And he's trying to shoot that ball, I think, into the right center gap, but he just got under it a hair, but still gets the runner over. A productive at bat. So a runner on third for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. One for two in the game, singles back in the first off of Tyler Anderson as the first pitch is in the dirt. Blue Jays threatened in the first inning, had runners on first and third with one out, failed to score. Hadn't really threatened again until this inning. Already a run across and a chance for another with Guerrero at the plate. Anderson deals. Called strike, it's one and one. And you wonder if they were going to really go after Guerrero, even though Chapman has hit the ball really hard this season as far as his hard hit percentage. Guerrero's had success against Anderson. Not a big sample size, but you feel he can stay on that changeup, so you're going to have to make him swing at something that's out of the zone, I feel, on this at bat. If not, you have an open base. Foul back over the screen. That was a pretty good hack. That's a bad feeling when somebody has a swing like that on you. I'm going, okay, I, I, but then you think, all right, I got away with my one mistake in that at bat. Because Don Drysdale, the late Don Drysdale, once told me every hitter is going to have one pitch to drive in an at bat. But you just got to make him uncomfortable, and he hopefully will miss that one pitch. Fouled it away again. Two good swings right there by Vladdy. One on the fastball, one on the changeup. So as a pitcher-catcher combo, their wheels are probably yep. spinning, thinking, okay, he's been on both of those. Normally you get him ahead of the changeup or behind the fastball, and you can navigate accordingly. With the man on third, though, you take away a lot of that bounce, break a ball, or change up in the dirt because there's a man of third he can score on a wild pitch. So man on second's different. <laughs> Merrifield just trying to get the attention there of Anderson. Tyler Anderson against Guerrero. Swung on and lifted down the left field line. Just, and I mean just foul. It was the changeup, and Vladdy was just out front. Uh, we said it earlier, he hits the baseball as hard as anyone in this game, even when he's out front, off balance. See that ball hooking just to the left of the foul pole. That swing right there against the changeup looked exactly like his dad right there. <laughs> and interesting you say that he's really not like his no, dad. No, but he on that swing there, just, just oh, a little yes. bit up, but he still kept his hands back yes. in there. Rock it. And they'll do it again. 2-2. Two -two. Spoiled. And there will be an eighth pitch to this at-bat. We're going to need new baseball first. New baseball. Now, I got a question for the pitcher here, Mr. Gubaza. You want a new baseball. You know what I used to think as a catcher? He's looking for seams. And that's, uh, yeah, always I've been thinking. That's why I never threw a baseball away either, because I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, he, he thinks I'm throwing a breaking ball right there. <laughs> One of them goes back to the cutter here looking for yep. some seams. Grounded left side. Velasquez from the outfield. Grass long throw in time. That's a great play by Andrew Velasquez. Known for the glove and a strong throwing arm. That's a huge out. Game tied, but that could have easily been the lead for the Jays. Andrew Velasquez. The long throw gets Guerrero. Keeps it a 1-1 game.
is brought to you by Uber One. One membership to save on Uber and Uber Eats. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. They have made some beautiful renovations to this ballpark. Phase one completed in April, transforming the outfield areas. Phase two happening this winter. New life to the old Sky Dome that opened in 1989. Looking a little different these days, eh, Ahmed? Yeah, we had to see it for ourselves. Dexter and I are out here. We're at Park Social. This is kind of like the family-friendly area. There's Xbox video games going on. You see there's a candy wall behind us, Dexter. Kids you know, everywhere. You know what? If this is only phase one, I'm, I'm interested to see what phase two looks like. So it's going to be $300 million when they're all said and done. Next year, they're going to rip out a lot of the seats in the 100 level and, and orient them towards the baseball field. It's never really been like a baseball stadium only, but they're going to do that. But, yeah, right now we have these new sight lines. And this is kind of something you see in Colorado, too. Absolutely. Ballpark. Absolutely. A lot of a lot of the ballparks are, are now doing this. And, they, I mean, what can't you do up here? You can drink. You can drink good. You can eat good. Yes. You can play good. And you can watch you can watch the Blue Jays win a ball game. All right, Brendan. So we're going to walk through. You're free to talk to us <laughs> as we walk through and show you this whole uh, area. So you guys are at the top, the 500 level 500 of level. the outfield. The I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's really high up here. The entire outfield has been redone as Whit Merrifield comes over and makes the catch and foul ground for the first out of the inning. Uh, they altered the outfield walls as well. They brought in right center and left center. They changed the height of the walls down in center field, up in other places. Uh, but you guys are seeing what the fans are getting to experience out there and some of the fun parts of the ballpark. We've got cornhole. <laughs> We've got Xbox cornholes over here. The people sorry. playing the MLB The Show. Excuse Love me. it. I almost took you out. I'm sorry about that. Almost took out a fan up here. Uh, Dexter, you think we can make it over to the rooftop bar? By I, the think, end of I think we can make it over there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough because this right. place is big. Brendan, we're going. All right. We're trying to make no, it. it. We're so doing it. Inside. We're doing it. It's quite the walk. They're going behind the hotel? How, how does this even construct it out there? This is behind the, um, I guess, behind the, the, the Jumbotron. I think that's your room from last night, Ahmed. <laughs> no, that was my room. It was, room. <laughs> it was my room. He goes, I, he, he go, I, go, he, I woke up and I looked out the window. I was like, oh, there's the ballpark. <laughs> That's, what, that's my office for today. I don't know if we'll lose signal back here, but so far so good. <laughs> Trey Cabbage batting and fouls one off his foot. It I looks mean, as though maybe they went to a party and a baseball game broke yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Lots to do out there. But you have this ballpark that was, as we said, it's getting up there in years, but the roof's still good. It's a beautiful retractable dome. There's no reason to change that. So what they're doing basically is piece by piece kind of building a new ballpark within the existing structure. It rather, looks brand new right now. Well, yeah, and rather than move, they're going to upgrade it. And the renovations have been spectacular. Even watching, looking at the outfield walls there, the bullpens now are raised both in right and left field. But the wall used to be a 10-foot wall all the way across from left field foul pole to right field. But now they've changed the heights at times. The distances have brought in in certain areas so it's, a, it's certainly aesthetically pleasing but more so than anything i think the biggest term mark shapiro has used is they changed a stadium into a ballpark and that's what it's become is a beautiful ballpark trey cabbage strikes out fourth strikeout today for jose barrios who has settled in here in the fifth and sixth innings and that slurve is really good against the left-handed batters going down and in late break to it you think it's a left-handed hitter you got that pitch exactly in your wheelhouse and the bottom drops out no chance to make contact He'll use that back door to lefties, but as a put-away pitch, you usually see it right there, down and in. Good sharp break. Barrios approaching 100 pitches here, and there is activity. Genesis Cabrera is warming in the bullpen now. Uh, dare I ask where you guys are now, Ahmed? We made it. All the way across? <laughs> we made okay. it. We did it. In the Instagram area here. Hello. He called it the Instagram area. I love it. So the other, the other area was more family friendly. Not that this is not family friendly. This is a little more grown. This is more this grown. Is grown. They got the they got the couches over here. Yep. You're now in right field now. On the rooftop patio. Rooftop, yeah. I call it right center. All right. There's more music here. A little different kind of music. Yeah, different vibe. I love this. <laughs> How's the view from up there? Can you see us? Uh, yeah. You gonna make some friends up there? 
I don't know. This is. I mean, this is, it gets a little dicey up here. I can, you know, <laughs> looking over the edge. I don't know how they do it. Oh, really? You're, you're afraid of heights? You no, 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 no. If I'm flying, I'm good. You. I'm good. But it gets a little dicey once you start looking over the front. Excuse me. So man, I have can Ahmed I, can I get tell a you look what. Over here too? Yeah, we'll have, we'll have him tell oh, you what, what's over there. Should have brought some peacock hats or something to give out. Yeah, that looks pretty. I'm right with you there, That's Dexter. I'm not getting that close. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm, Dexter, I'm, I'm, hey, Dexter, just come right up here. It's I'm not, fine. Yeah, I Look can see. I can see him straight from here. I'll get. I'll get low like this, but I'm not. I'm not going over top. I'm too tall for it. How tall are you, Dexter? Six five. Six five. So he wants the railing to be a little bit higher. <laughs> Let's go. Here, this will be a good look at where, where exactly we are. they you are. You see where I am? Yep. That's I'm awesome. I'm, I, hey, I got my hand on his back. I'm good. <laughs> I got you. If anything bad yeah, happens, we're not I going over you. the top. Alaska strikes out. Uh, guys, thanks for the tour of the uh, renovations here in Toronto. One, two, three. Go the Angels. Lead off next Sunday, catch the Chicago White Sox and the Cleveland Guardians. Our coverage begins 11.30 a.m. Eastern only on Peacock. Today we're at Rogers Center, not to be confused with Rogers Arena in Vancouver, Rogers Place in Edmonton. We're in Toronto. Yes. Blue Jays and Angels tied at one. With all the traffic we've had on the bases and all the base runners left on base, it doesn't feel like a 1-1 game, but now it's kind of settling in. And we're getting a little late now as things start to become even more important, amplified in importance. And both managers are really thinking about what kind of swings they're going to have against their pitchers here today to determine when they're going to get guys up and in the game out of the bullpen. Two very good performances from two starting pitchers, and certainly this one looks like it's going to be handled with these managers and how they strategically employ their relievers and Chapman leading off the home half of the sixth he's 0 for 2 so far struck out his first half that still trying to elevate that fastball against him that is the only strikeout for Tyler Anderson in this game and this one is ripped down the left field line fair ball into the corner Moniak comes up with it, is charging to second, goes Chapman. He's in there with a leadoff double. Matt Chapman is a doubles hitting machine, and he got one of those fastballs, Mark, up in the zone, and he barreled it. Yeah, that was out over the plate where he gets his arms extended. You mentioned those doubles now, 33. That's huge, especially to get a leadoff double at this point in the game now. Especially when you have Springer at the plate. It's a tough one now as far as trying to make sure you not only try to get an out, but get an out without allowing Chapman to advance to third base. And on the very next pitch, George Springer hits one into the alley, tracked down by Moniak. That wasn't and real good base running there necessarily by Chapman. He was thinking that ball was going to be left center field. If he's back at the back, he's going to score anyhow. And another well hit ball by Springer. He's got to be upset with this. The rule of thumb when you're on second base and nobody out, you have to make sure you get to third base. Now, Matt's reading this, I think, by 
the time the outfielder is getting ready to catch this baseball, you've got time to get back to the base and tag and advance 90 feet. And that's, he knows it. Look at him clap his hands. That is a base running mistake that could be costly for the Blue Jays in a tie ball game. So now Alejandro Kirk, who's 0 for 2 so far, but had two home runs in the late innings of yesterday's game, stands in. 33 doubles, by the way, for Chapman. Only Freddie Freeman has more in Major League Baseball, and that's 35. So he's right there. He's the AL leader, and that close to the Major League lead in doubles. Matt got off to a great start early in the season, player of the month in April, but then he really experienced a lot of struggles, and it looks like he is coming on back, and there's just another one of those bats that they need to heat up for the final couple of months. This offense needs to take it to the next level. The interesting thing about that, Matt Chapman is an excellent base runner, too. Yeah. And you can tell, he's even going back to the base, he's still frustrated about that. You and I were up here. When George hit that ball, it looked to me like it was in the gap. Yep. I thought it was a double in the gap that he's scoring easily, and I wondered from second base if it looked the yeah. same, so he kind of cheated a little bit, but then realized, I'm too far off to go back and tag. Springer's still loose. In the dugout, even with the struggles that he's had. He's had three pretty good swings today. Yeah, yeah. So I think the Angels are going to be real happy getting out of town now. <laughs> he's had a lot of tremendous swings in his career against the Angels with his home runs, his power. Might be a good time to get out of town before Springer to really starts heating up. Kirk rolls one towards third. Charging hard is Escobar. There goes Chapman, and he's able to get to third on the ground now. I talk about his base running acumen. That was a heads up baseball play there. And the reason why you do that is because now you've taken away that pitch potentially in the third. It's fair to be in a second base. And actually, I like the play by Moustakis at first base. Don't try to be a hero here and come off the bag and fire something to third. Moustakis just said, let's get the out. We'll go ahead and take our chances with Jansen with the runner on third and two outs. That's a big thing. Exactly right, Joe. It was two outs. One out, maybe you'll be a little more aggressive. But with two outs, you, you got to have trust in your pitcher to get through this. Here's Danny Jansen, who has come up with clutch hit after clutch hit this season. He's certainly not underappreciated here in Toronto, Joe, but the season that he's having, certainly underrated throughout baseball. He's been really big in big situations, just like you talked about. He's get late in the ball game, and he's come up big. And one thing with Danny, he is a self-proclaimed pull hitter, and he's made no bones about it. He's gone back and forth in his young career but he has said I am at my best when I'm pulling the baseball he is looking to catch something out front and do damage to the left side he knows that's when he is at his best and that's probably the best version of himself oh, two inside he is third on the team in RBIs and 10th in plate appearances and it's amazing what he's done too with runners in scoring position and two outs 318 usually pitchers and the run is in scoring position. Your focus goes up even more so, but with two outs, even more difficult to get a good score. That one bounced in there, and a nice job by Thice to keep in front of him. That's exactly why you go to third base. Just in case yeah. you get one of those scratch yeah. runs to come across. It makes Thice's job much more difficult right now. You have to be perfect back there as a catcher. Your sense of focus and urgency is big time now with that runner on third, and Chapman was ready for it. 2-2, two, two, two outs, Chapman on third base. Starting pitcher Tyler Anderson still in there, and Danny Jansen hits one in the air to right. Renfro jogs in, makes the catch, and ends the inning. So we go to the seventh in a 1-1 tie.
for Jose Barrios. All in all, pretty good outing, Joe. Another excellent outing, and we talked about it in the open earlier in this ball game. was about Barrios and his unpredictability, again, using all of his pitches, the four-seamer, the sinker, that breaking ball, and the changeup, and it makes it difficult for hitters to sit on any pitches. Now, he's not a guy that's throwing 98, 99 miles per hour, but you throw enough of those off-speed pitches, six of the strikeouts, two on each of those, but he was able to get some swings and misses with that four-seam fastball. Did a really good job against a lot of left-handed batters. It's the four-seamer up, it's the sinker up, moving in and out at times, and then the way he mixed in the breaking ball and the changeup. Just a very good performance. Again, this is becoming the Jose Barrios of 2023. Okay. And, when, and the impressive thing is you look at those strikeouts, they're in zones. That means your stuff's pretty good. You're not getting chases necessarily out of the strike zones. You're getting in zone swing and misses. New pitcher is Genesis Cabrera, the first trade deadline pickup, if you will, for the Toronto Blue Jays, coming in as a lefty out of the bullpen who requested some landscaping done on the mound before he's ready to throw. A sneaky little pickup here by the Blue Jays. I say sneaky because it was sneaky under the radar to me. When I heard about this trade, I'm thinking, oh, let's look into this guy, and it didn't really look like anything too impressive, but what he has done is he's added a left-handed arm to the Blue Jays' bullpen. Tim Meza was the only lefty down there. This now allows John Schneider to bring in Cabrera a little bit earlier in the game. You might see him in the fifth, you might see him in the sixth, but you can use him against some lefties at a critical point and still have Tim Meza later in the game at a more high leverage situation. Now, they've got a couple righties down there in Trevor Richards and Eric Swanson. They're very good against left-handed batters, but again, high leverage guys you can save for a little bit later. So, improved depth in the Blue Jays' bullpen. And bring them in from the top of the order. Renjifo, Otani, Moniak do up here in the inning. Listen to every MLB game live or on demand with At Bat. Plus, watch all minor league baseball and live look-ins on MLB Big Inning. No blackouts. Visit MLB.com slash At Bat for details. When you bring him in a lefty, doesn't that mean you're thinking you're going to be facing and going after Shohei Otani then? Yeah. Because then when you look at yeah. the numbers, the splits this season for Renjifo batting to the right side, a lot more power. You go back to last season, 11 home runs, an OPS of 909 versus left-handed pitching. He also, this season, is slugging higher versus left-handed pitching. 540 as compared to right he's in there looking at his glove yeah. right there just to make sure that everything is okay with that all the umpires came yes in. maybe they just liked the teal color and wanted to take a closer look at it <laughs> uh, they obviously had some sort of issue they wanted to get figured out could it be the multi-colored glove i thought there was something regarding having more than a one color it in the used to be there. an issue but i don't think it anymore yeah. though it definitely was before not looking for anything tacky were they <laughs> <laughs> i just think that. everything is pretty cool looking i think that's what they're saying <laughs> Yeah, I thought for a second they were feeling the hands, but yeah. then they took the glove away from them and brought all four umpires together. So here we go, new pitcher. And Luis Renjifo, who went 2-4-3 against Jose Barrios, stands in for his fourth at-bat. And then right on cue, he had some pretty good numbers against Barrios, and he continued to hear today. This one is grounded too short. Bo Bichette, no problem. Yeah, so now here comes the in interesting scenario here. No one on. Tie ball game, seventh inning, lefty on the mound, power stuff, Shohei Otani at the plate. I'm sure this situation was discussed many times before this <laughs> series started, before this game started. When will we pitch to him? When won't we pitch to him? Cabrera's going after him. He's been on base twice today in three at bats, and he fooled Otani there. And Shelly has nine home runs versus left-handed pitching, so he stays in. A lot of his power when he faces the lefty, especially late in the game, he'll go to left center. And that pitch right there is new for Cabrera this year. I asked him about it yesterday. It's a hard slider cutter, 90-91. There it is right there. And I asked him why he had the fastball and the curveball, and he said needed something different, needed another look. That is a very good look. And the other thing he's doing, he's throwing a lot of fastballs in to left-handed hitters. We'll see if he doesn't crowd him with a sinker also. There. I'll tell you what, though, that pitch before the cutter, Shelley tracked that well. And if that's in the strike zone, he's going to hit that a long way. And if he gets him a chase out of the zone, more power to Cabrera. But Shohei is so good as far as because he's a pitcher. Yep. So he knows exactly what he would throw. And he's tracking that cutter away here. If it catches his own, it could be hit hard. 2 1 misses down. It's 3 and 1. First ever at bat for Otani against Cabrera. 
To me, that's advantage pitcher. As great as Otani is, if Huge a hitter advantage. has not seen you, just don't know how it's coming out of your hand, your delivery. Throws him there, and the count runs full. So Cabrera has had good strikeout numbers, but he has struggled with his command. Did so in St. Louis. 18 walks in 32 innings before the trade. And that's right. Sink it in now. And if yep. you miss, miss in off the plate. So what? Don't let it be there. 3-2 to Otani. Grounded to second. Espinal retires Shohei Otani two away. To his credit, he went after him. and got Shohei hit the ball on the ground. If you get Shohei hit the ball on the ground, you're doing your job. See how he stayed down on that one, too. He was tracking that lower part. Every pitch was down. Just enough away where he wasn't able to stay on it a little bit longer and hit it to left center. Such a dangerous setback for a pitcher. There is just no room for error when you're facing Otani. So two outs, nobody on for Mickey Moniak, and that one hurts. It's amazing how many times we've seen hitters getting out front, either hitting off their foot or off their knee or shin area this season. And there's that sinker I'm referring to from Cabrera. He told me yesterday, he said, sinker, sinker. I've got that sinker now. He'll run it in on lefties, and there it is. And you catch the top of the baseball and pound it right into either your knee or your shin or your foot, and it hurts. Well, Mickey Moniak, the former number one overall pick back in 2016. Philadelphia Phillies, no doubt, wanted to take him number one, took him. It just never really worked down for him. He's from Southern California, only played 47 games with the Phillies. Then he gets traded. Noah Syndergaard going the other way, and he has been right at home, both literally and figuratively, with the Angels, been leading them in batting average since he was called up, a guy that didn't even start the season on the Major League roster. And he's been great in late and close, 423, an OPS of 1329. He gets him out in front of that one. Guerrero will take it himself and a perfect inning for Cabrera in his first inning of work. Time to stretch here in Toronto. Love that. Okay, Blue Jays traditional yes. seventh inning stretch song here in Toronto. But can you do it? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nor do you care to try nope. to do it. That's a hard no. Uh, seventh inning, bottom of the seventh. Espinal, Varsho, and Merrifield do up. That's eight, nine, and one against the starter, Tyler Anderson. Matt Moore is getting warm in the bullpen. But they bring Anderson out to start the seventh inning. He has not recorded an out in the seventh inning yet this season. Until now, as he strikes out Espinal for out number one. That was a great, great changeup. This is a good sequence overall, especially in the seventh inning here for Tyler Anderson to get a chase like that. 
It's all the setup pitches before that. You know that, Joe. Pretty simple formula today for Tyler Anderson. It's been a lot of the fastballs up in the zone and the changeups down and away to most of these right-handed hitters. Of our show, the only lefty in the lineup. But the Blue Jays hitters have just not been able to solve him. You see the backyard of the bigs for Dalton Varshow. Dad Gary played eight seasons in the majors. Currently a scout with the Pirates. His so favorite player, Jim Tomey. Wow, that's a pretty good guy to like. Well, he was gigantic. Yes. Well, I mean, still gigantic, but he was gigantic on the field. You didn't realize it until you walked up on yeah. him and go, is he ever going to stop rolling here? <laughs> and stop hitting home runs. Yes, yeah, so it's swinging as hard as possible. <laughs> That's ripped, and it's off the glove of Moustakis and into right field. He's thinking two. Here comes the throw. It's not in time. And a hustle double for Dalton Varsho. Back-to-back -back doubles in his last two at-bats. Well, he hit the ball well today. He was robbed by a sliding play by Mickey Moniak back in the second inning, and he's doubled twice since then. And he's hit two baseballs right on the money, about as hard as you can hit. Just off the glove, and Mustakas is playing in just enough. And that's going to force Phil Nevin to go to the bullpen now with all the right-handed batters coming up. So top of the order coming up in Whit Merrifield and Bull Bichette. And so the day is done for Tyler Anderson after six and a third in Toronto this afternoon. Third scattered seven hits, just one run allowed. He really pitched, and that's the thing about Tyler Anderson. You go back to last year, he was an all-star. He was a dominant pitcher the entire season for the Dodgers. And today, he pitched. He changed eye levels with his four-seam fastball upstairs. He utilized his defense. He had some hitters out in front towards the end of the bat. Some chases with his changeup. See that we're as far as his outs. His four-seam fastball today, got 11 outs with seven with his changeup and one with his cutter. I mean, you see the numbers against his fastball this year. The hitters had pretty good success against it, but today he utilized it very, very well, kept it away from the middle part of the play and was successful with it. The fastball changeup combination, you don't need to be 97, 98 yep. miles per hour. Lower velocity, but you fill the top of the zone with the four seamers. You go down with the changeups. You go back and forth. Makes it difficult on hitters. Very similar pitching performances by the starters today. I thought both Barrios and Anderson pitched well. Had a little trouble in some traffic, was able to get out. Stackcast powered by Google Cloud. Whit Merrifield, Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero. Next three do up. And Merrifield swings at the first pitch and chops it to third. Escobar, the runner breaks towards third. No throw. Dalton Varsho using the speed. It looked like there was a play. I'm not sure everybody on the Angels was ready for that. Again, you have a lot of guys now playing out of position. You got Mustakas who came up as a third base. He's played a lot more first base in the late. Yeah, that squad doesn't get a chance to really look back the runner. With Murrayfield's speed, you can't afford to look him back to second base. So as soon as that throw is made, and you're trying to get Velasquez over there to be covering third base on that one. As soon as that throw is made, you can see he's got that speed. And that's, again, why you do that. 
But uh, the interesting thing is you're at home now. You got three right-handed batters coming up, and you bring in the lefty Matt Moore, but his splits are really good. Just a 150 batting average for right-handed batters and a slugging percentage of 225 for right-handed batters versus him because he's got that great swing and miss and soft contact changeup. Facing the AL batting leader in Bo Bichette as this one line foul. Anytime you can move up 90 feet and you have Bo Bichette coming to play, it's a great thing. And that's what Dalton Varsho brings. It has been a struggle aside from this afternoon offensively for him this year. But he brings so much to the Blue Jays outfield defense, but also to base running. And there was 90 feet that you don't see from a lot of players. 1-1-2 one, one, Bichette. Hopped up foul. This will make the seats. Last year when he moved to the bullpen, Matt Moore had one of the best knuckle curves and success last year when his knuckle curve was outstanding, but he still has that great changeup. So it's two pitches, because he's been a starter, so he has four pitches anyhow, four pitch mix. But when you have a good curveball and a changeup, you could be effective against right-handed batters. And still sneak a 95 mile an hour fastball upstairs. One, two, found back. Like that. <laughs> Bo got a piece of it. I don't know how he got a piece of that one. That, That's unbelievable. It really is something because, again, we talk about how his athleticism and the way he turns the barrel, he can get it so deep that he can get to pitches and foul them off like that and stay alive like no other. It's remarkable. Mentioned in last inning with Otani, first career at bat for Bo Bichette against Matt Moore. Fouled away, which... Matt Surprising. Moore, who's been a suitcase yeah. lately. Yeah. Six teams in seven years, and that's only because he went to Texas twice. He's been with seven different organizations yeah. in seven successive seasons. And he's really settled in the relief role. He's been a, an elite pitcher out of the bullpen from the left side. Have left arm, will travel. Yeah. Isn't that the <laughs> saying for these left-handed pitchers? They can play a long time. One, two from the 34-year-old is inside. What a nice job to block that one, too. That gives you a lot of confidence that you can get that potential swing and miss break a ball in the dirt because that was well off the plate in it's the guy behind the plate with not a lot of major league experiences catching too he's oh. down on one knee it's going to limit your mobility to your left but he's able to get there just enough to keep that ball in front of him two two to Bichette well, look at his hands right there, too. He moves his hands, how quick his hands are. He has employed his two-strike approach here, and he's able to get to that. But look at the athleticism. He gets such a good stretch, but the barrel gets turned so deep. When I mean so deep, it's back by the catcher, so it's in the hitting zone extremely early. I would say earlier than most hitters. He can let the ball travel and see the ball a lot longer. 2-2. Two, two. Up them up, shallow center. Long run in for Cabbage. And it's the second baseman, Renjifo, who ultimately got there to make the catch and end the inning and the threat. One run on each side through seven innings as Varsho stranded on third.
Bichette leading the AL in hits again. He's done that for back-to-back -back seasons already. We want to know the five players to lead the AL in hits in three straight seasons. No one of them. The last one wasn't that long ago. After that, can you name them? I, I think I can pick one. All right. I feel pretty comfortable with one because he has the all-time record for hits in a season. I'm guessing Ichiro's got to be one, isn't he? Yeah. Well, that baseball got up our level here, by That's the way. That, did. <laughs> that was up there. <laughs> the one that I knew is Jose Altuve just did it. Wow. 2014 to 2017. So we got two of them so far. Not a Wade Boggs. Could be as this one is hit into right by Moustakis. Springer fighting the sun and lost it, and Varsho was able to get there. I don't know how Varsho was able to get that far. That ball almost popped out of his glove, and he was trying to track that one. Well, Kevin Kiermeyer is off today, so Dalton Varsho slides from left to center, but I got news for you folks. This is one of the best outfielders in the game, no matter where you put him. And he realized very late that George lost this ball, so he came over and helped. Right there, George is yelling. Can't see it, can't see it. So Dalton, who was giving up that ball to George, comes over to make the play. Oh, and that one caught Vice. And he is shaking up. And that got him right on the elbow. And that would be his throwing arm, too, as a catcher. So Cabrera talked about his command issues that time lost the pitch in on Thice. Got him on the lower part of the arm. But he is at least walking his way to first base, which you can tell is his intention to stay in it. And he's about as tough as the customer is in the game. And he's playing a lot of games behind the plate and without having caught a lot of games at the major league level, even the minor league level behind the plate. He's as tough as it can be. He got hit right where a lot of guys wear that protection yeah. on that that inside elbow. It's almost strange not to see a, an yeah. elbow guard on a hitter anymore. But that's Cabrera in a nutshell. We've talked about him scattering the ball a little bit, but it's also what makes him so effective. He did it yesterday coming in, getting a couple of huge outs in the fifth inning, striking out Moustakas and getting Thice to pop up. But that sinker will run in on lefties. And that'll be the end of the day, it would appear, for Cabrera as Jade Jackson is getting ready to come in. I'm telling you, I'd be wearing the Barry Bonds oh, armor yes. if I'm standing in there facing Cabrera or anyone else on a major league mound. An apologetic tap of the chest by Cabrera in the direction of Matt Thice on his way off the mound. Jay Jackson coming in for the Blue Jays. Original Twisted Metal, the high-octane comedy based on the classic video game series, follows a motormouth outsider on a mission across a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Twisted Metal, streaming now on Peacock. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. We're not going to take it. Here's Jay Jackson coming in to replace Cabrera, who 
retired four batters, the first four batters, before he hit Thice and was taken out of the game. Jay Jackson came in relief of Cabrera yesterday as well, came in and got a couple of outs after a leadoff double by Hunter Renfro. And I'm sure this is a matchup that the Blue Jays were looking at going into this series. Renfro, more of a pull type hitter. Jay Jackson, a lot of sliders, a lot of sliders away to right handed batters. I'm sure that's what we're going to see in this matchup right here. Yeah, he's over 62% of his pitches are sliders. Thice does stay in the game at first base as if catchers don't take enough abuse. He's been hit twice in the game today. That's why I always say if you're a pitcher, you got to take care of your catchers. You got to take them to dinner all the time, Joe. That has, <laughs> has to be done. I go back when I saw Thice get hit there, I was going back to watching pitchers hit. And you always worried about the right handed throwing pitcher that batted left handed, and that elbow was just sitting right there. Shohei Otani being one. Oh. Randy Johnson was the same way. Yeah. Bat pitching left handed, batted right handed, right? left arm, especially when he was wild as he was. <laughs> that pitch is outside to Renfro, who has faced Jackson one time in his career and hit a double off of him. That was yesterday. Renfro got yep. a fastball up in the zone from Jackson, and that would probably be a rare fastball. That's why I think we're going to see a steady diet of sliders this time. Long wait before the 1 1. There it is, lined into left field. That'll get down for a base hit in front of Merrifield. So Thice moves to second as Renfro picks up his second hit of the day. He's really starting to get hot. He had a big time series in Detroit. He's been staying on that break ball a lot better. And that's a slider down, and he's still able to hook that one. You see the the hinge at his hips. His upper body is out over the plate. That's how you get to that pitch down and out over the plate. And I talked earlier about him being a pull hitter. He went down and yeah. got that and pulled it hard into left field. And even when you look at Springer, he was playing pretty shallow and right because he figured if he was going to hit something up in the air, it was going to be shallow towards the end of the battle on that slider away. So a pretty good indication he was going to throw a bunch to him. Eduardo Escobar now the batter swings and misses at the first pitch. I mean he had a lot of big time swings last year for the Mets in the month of September the big run they had and he's still looking for that signature hit here for the Angels and this is that spot now where you have another two guys on base you need that big swing from Escobar if you're the Angels. Calls time here Escobar came over from the Mets in a trade on June 24th played 40 games with the Mets before coming over and joining the Angels. Guy was an all-star in 2021 in Arizona. 0 for 2 with a walk today. With two on and one out. Up high, and it's one and one. He's been fairly impatient for in watching Escobar right now. Usually a guy that I've seen over the years, I mean, he's got a lot of power in his bat. He's been chasing, especially the break a ball down and in. A lot in fastball up and well above the strike zone. You can get him to chase. I think the slider from Jackson's going to be the more effective pitch. 1-1 one, one, hit high in the air to right field again into the sun for Springer and Varsho and they're both there and it is Springer with a little bit of contact there who makes the catch as Thice tags and goes to third. That was an adventure. Well we saw this one earlier where Dalton had to come in and take over for Georgia. It looked like Georgia may have lost this for a second again but Varsho I'm sure is thinking I had to do it once I'll do it again and that one almost ended poorly. Springer posted up and made the play on that one. <laughs> the jump ball. <laughs> Taller guy got it. Yes. And Thanks was right there to make the tag in advance. So runners on the corners now for Trey Cabbage. And that was important too because of the outfield arms of the Jays. If it faces at second, it would be a difficult task to score on a base hit at him. So they get the third base obviously much easier. So the 26 year old rookie Trey Cabbage in a big spot here for the Angels takes outside for ball one. Oftentimes we'll see Kevin Kiermeyer enter the ball game late on his day off if they have a lead. He's not in there yet. He's got the best arm in the Blue Jays outfield. Cabbage just made his major league debut on the 14th of July. He fouls this one back. It's one and one. One one got strike two as he fooled cabbage there. 
Tim Mesa getting warm in the bullpen for Toronto if needed. Danny Jansen stepping out in front of home plate alerting his infielders now just in the event of a double steal if that runner takes off from first what am I doing with the baseball you want to make sure your infielders know so they don't vacate their position unnecessarily. Cabbage has struck out twice in three plate appearances today. Behind in the count one and two. This one is down the right field line and just foul. Boy not by far but just down in front to pull that slider foul. We've seen some pretty good offensive approaches from Angels hitters today, even against Barrios. I thought they had some really good swings on some pretty good pitches from Barrios. There's another one there. Slider down in the zone, really stays on it, and lines it down that right field line, just missing. I think he's going to try that slider again, but this might be bounced in the ground here now. Just to try to get him swing over top of it. One two coming from Jay Jackson. Strike three. Cabbage couldn't hold up. He strikes out for the third time today. And two more runners left on base by the Angels. Ten so far in the ballgame. To lead the AL for the third straight season and hits five players have already done it. We try to name them. We got a couple of them Jose Altuve and Ichiro the last two to do it Kirby Puckett before that and then he got to go way back. Hall Tony of Famer. And Ty Cobb. Tony Oliva Hall yeah. of Famer. Good to see him put in there justly done finally. Great great hitter. I mean, Brock Carew used to tell me so many stories about how much he learned from him. How great of a hitter. Tony Oliva. What a swing. Boba Shep made the last out of the seventh inning, so Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is leading off the eighth in a 1 1 tie. How do you have a game where there's 14 hits and it's a 1 1 tie? Well, you combine to strand 17 runners. Ten left by the Angels, seven so far by the Blue Jays. It's been a theme in this series, not just today. Seventh time as Guerrero fouls one back. The Angels have stranded 10 runners in a game this season. That's the thing, too. Those approaches, you just think, again, I always go back to you just think middle of the field. Now, you can react a mistake on the inside part. That's where you could do some damage, drive it. If you just stay that middle of the field approach, there's just more outfield grass there in the middle of the field. Inside, three and one. It's amazing when teams struggle with runners in scoring position, the conversation always comes up. What's the best approach? And I've always felt as a catcher, the toughest guy to have at the plate is the guy that had a good approach all the time. Like, those are what good hitters do. What's a good approach? It's getting a very good pitch early in the count. You zone in in the heart of the plate. As you get one strike, you might have to expand a hair. As you get that second strike, expand even more. But the guys that are the most dangerous are disciplined with that approach. But way easier said than done. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. 
Three two. Bounced it in there. Guerrero will hurry up down to first. And a leadoff man aboard here in the eighth inning. From the latest baseball news to the top trending highlights and more, get it all by following at MOB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. There had only been one walk in the game issued by Angel pitching. Bo Bichette walked in the third against Tyler Anderson, and now Guerrero aboard at first for Chapman. The AL leader in doubles who doubled in the sixth, and he swings at the first pitch and hits one in the air to center. He's aggressive like most of these Jays hit her on the first pitch, but he's done some damage on the first pitch. And you know he's always up there trying to crush the baseball against the Angels. He's had some big swings in his career. Orange County native with the El Toro High School. By the way, the same high school, Nor Nolan Arenado. How about that infield? Oh. How'd you ever get hit by those guys? He got a good pitch to hit, too, for Moore. He's looking first pitch heater and got it, but looked like it may have beat him just a bit middle in. There you see the backyard of the bigs for George Springer from the other side of the country. Went to UConn, went to Avon All Farms. Drafted in the 48th round by Minnesota and said, no, thanks, I'm going to UConn. Then drafted number 11 overall by Houston. 48th round, 11th overall. Good decision. I probably went to a lot of basketball games at UConn. Though. A lot of success in that basketball program. George needs to flare one in there somewhere. He's had three pretty hard hit balls today and nothing to show for it. In the dirt. And Thanks able to keep it in front of him. He's going to need a few ice bags after this one, Matt. Mm -hmm. Be real comfortable going through customs on the way down to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big trip for the Angels. Started strong with a sweep in Detroit and coming here and heading to Atlanta after this as this is popped in the air, shallow right field, mm -hmm. Renhefo out and Renfro in. He tried that flare approach, but this stayed <laughs> up a little bit too long. You're right on keel on that one, Joe, but it's, 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 it hung up there a little bit too long. And that fastball got in on him just a bit. That fastball beat him that got just toward the label of the bat. That's a bit of a jam shot. A little sneaky fastball. 96 miles per hour for Matt Moore. Still has a good fastball going. After two changeups, especially, I guarantee it to a hitter. That 96 yeah. is looking like 106. Moore had a quick throw over to first base that almost wound up getting by Mustakis. He made a nice play to grab it, and Guerrero made an awkward dive back into the bag. The series beginning a stretch of 25 consecutive games against winning teams for the Angels. It is not going to be a waltz back into a wild card spot mm -hmm. to try to make up ground. How about this schedule? Atlanta, Seattle, San Fran, Houston, Texas, Tampa, and Cincinnati all on the horizon that's, for the Angels. That's why it's so important to get Brandon Drury back, to get Mike Trout back, to get Logan O'Hoppy back to her in this stretch. takes inside it's 2 and 0 oh. the only team in there that's not currently in a playoff spot is Seattle who is fighting for a playoff spot right alongside the Angels and they got outstanding starting pitching do you guys find the same thing I do is you look at your upcoming schedule for the team that you're following and nothing looks easy anymore <laughs> tell you what though even going through those stretches so when you're contending you want to play contending teams too because I always thought even when when as part of that Royals team won the World Series in 85. We had to face the Angels a number of times, eight times in the month of September, and then we were battling with them. We won seven of eight. We only won by one game that year over the Angels. Struggled against Seattle and Minnesota because it's a little different when playing teams that are just relaxed out there as compared to teams that are fighting for a playoff spot. Everything's the same. Rio is high as Guerrero had taken off, but Kirk draws a walk with two outs. That'll bring up Danny Jansen. Tell you what, that was interesting going 3 0. If that's a strike, you throw him out there. That would have been a huge break for the Angels. And to do that, I'm guessing that Mark Budzinski, the Blue Jays' first base coach, handles the base running. And he must have had something on Moore where he knew that he was going to the plate and glad he maybe took off and got a good jump. But that's a gamble with a yeah. lefty first move. And also, you better make sure you, you're successful with that stolen yeah. base. 
Weekends are better with MLB Sunday leadoff next Sunday. Catch the Chicago White Sox taking on the Cleveland Guardians, a team contending in the AL Central. Coverage begins 11.30 a.m. Eastern, only on Peacock. Interesting to see what the Guardians, or excuse me, what the White Sox have left on their roster by the time we get there next week. As a pinch runner taking the place of Alejandro Kirk. As Kevin Biggio comes off the bench. One of the reasons why you do that, too, is it makes sure if there is a ground ball in the hole, or say if Velasquez got a backhand, then you possibly take away the force out at second base with that speed, especially Biggio's getting a huge lead. I was a bit surprised, though, because it's a 1-1 ball game. And if that spot comes up again, you lose Kirk's bat. And for me, that's a big loss, the way Alejandro's been starting to swing it. That one just catches the outside corner at 95 miles an hour for strike one. Vigio's at first, but it is Guerrero at second base ahead of him. You also figure if you're looking down at the Angels' bullpen, it's mainly going to be right-handed pitchers now from this point forward. Jansen to third. Escobar didn't get there. They called him out, but he looked safe. Yeah, I think that definitely will challenge that one. That's a, that's a mistake right there. Had some time. The bobble of the baseball may have cost him. Good job by Vladdy yeah, going in. straight into the base with that slide. Andy extends. Fletcher, the crew chief at third base, is the one who made the call, but he was making it from behind. Tough to see it. Whose foot hit the bag first, but this looks like it'll be overturned. Yeah, you look at that foot straight on there. I mean, he was already walking down there knowing it was going to be challenged. There's a lot of umpires here in the stands, too. <laughs> right, and again, about the slide, a lot of guys will slide and they'll bend their leg as they slide into the bag. Buddy extended his leg out, his foot all the way to the base, and made sure it got there as quickly as possible. Fully extended when his foot touched the bag. 41,000-plus umpires here have already made their decision. <laughs> Wait, just waiting on New York. I mean, that angle for sure he beat it. And the other angle, it makes it a little bit closer as far as the foot getting to the bag, but there's no way it's not being overturned. The call on the field is overturned. Runner safe. So the bases are loaded. That's the type of play you're referring to with Biggio pinch running for Kirk if that's around the second base yeah. bag. Yeah, because at, at times so you bob like that, you have a shot. If yeah. you have. Kirk running at first base, you're going to have that opportunity to throw that ball to second base see, with the bobble, but then you have the, the throw there, I mean, to try to beat Guerrero, who's going quickly to third base on that one. Didn't give up on the play. you got to give Rag Guerrero Jr. a lot of credit. He's been around baseball his whole life. Knows you got to run out every single thing because of that. He beats out that play. So now it's Santiago Espinal. Trying to untie this game. It's 1-1. It has been 1-1 since the bottom of the fifth inning. Much better fastball hitter than breaking ball hitter. And there's a first pitch off speed for Moore. But I got to believe he's going to see a lot of off speed this at bat. Grounder to third. Another chance for Escobar. Goes the short way to second. And three more runners stand. How about 10 stranded on both sides? Still 1-1 to the ninth.
Any game live or on demand in all minor league baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. We go to the ninth in a 1-1 tie. Angels and Blue Jays. With the Angels trying to make up some ground in a crowded AL wild card picture. But the Jays have taken the first two games of this series, and now they hand the ball to the lefty Tim Mesa. Mesa pitched a scoreless inning Friday night for the Blue Jays in that 4-1 to win over the Angels. Gave up a couple of hits, but also struck out a pair. But I think this right here goes back to the point I made earlier when Genesis Cabrera came into this ball game. You use that lefty earlier so that you have your key lefty for higher leverage situations later. That's Tim Meza because the third batter this inning once again is Shohei Otani. And that's what this matchup to me is all about. Yeah, 91 96 fastball. Very good slider. It's amazing in this game both teams in the ninth inning will have their number nine hitter leading off in here. We talked about you just mentioned Brandon about left on base both yeah. with ten. This is it. Each have seven hits. It's a complete same matchup here by both teams with number nine hitter leading off in the ninth inning. New pitcher for the Jays. New hitter for the Angels. Michael Stefanik will bat in the place of Andrew Velasquez here to lead off the ninth inning. I mean this series these two teams are a combined Two for 49 with runners in scoring position. As Stefanik bounces one to the left side. Chapman makes the play. It's almost impossible to get anything by Chapman at third base. That range he has in his throwing arm. Ranging far to his left here. Watch him throw against the grain. Got to make sure that that arm catches up. Body with a nice stretch into the runner, staying in fair territory, making sure there is no interference, no collision there at the first base bag and so now the top of the order for the Angels Luis Renahifo who has two hits in the game to face Mesa and all his power especially last year batting from this side of the plate 11 home runs for this season first pitch is a strike All the way, and it's 0 and 2. Jose Soriano is up in the bullpen for the Angels. Again, 9 1 and 2 do up in the bottom of the ninth for Toronto. Varsho, who's got two doubles in the game, Merrifield and Bichette. But first things first, the top of the ninth inning with the Angels, who had. So much action in the early part of this game. Stranded two in the first, second, third, and fourth innings. The pitch is up. And then went quiet. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. Didn't have a base runner. Left two more in the eighth. And now batting here in the ninth. 2-2 two -two inside. And the count full to Renhifo. And you would love an opportunity to get Renhifo on base with Shohei Otani on deck. Outside, and there will be a man on for Otani. Another walk. Impatient at bat for Luis Renhifo. Tough to work a walk off Tim Mesa. Usually pretty good around the zone, but just missing with a couple of those sinkers. Yeah, he's six to one strike out the walk ratio. Yeah. Outstanding. So Shohei Otani has a single and has scored the only run for the Angels in this game. The Major League home run leader as well with 39. Stands in in a tie game in the ninth inning. He had a game down in Texas against the Rangers. A very, very good team where he had a home run in the ninth and home run in the twelfth to win it. And it was both the other way. This one in the dirt. Breaking was Ranjifo and he makes it without a play as Jansen... Struggled to locate that pitch in the dirt. And they're going to be walking him again. Yeah, first base is open. Yes. <laughs> you almost, uh, you maybe, almost, maybe you almost in the dirt on purpose. Stay there, stay there. <laughs> stay there, stay there. <laughs> maybe threw in the dirt on purpose. Good job by Jensen letting that ball go. Yes. It makes the decision easier. Oh, Tani. Stay, stay. No, he said go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in defensive Danny Jansen, that's a 95 mile per hour sinker in the dirt. You're not getting down your knees to block that. It was just spiked by Mesa, but this to me works out for John Schneider just fine. 
No much was made on Friday night when the Jays pitched to him in the first inning <laughs> with nobody on base. As this is grounded to first, they'll get just one out at second. As Guerrero forces out Otani. But Otani hit the home run on Friday night, and then afterwards the cameras caught Matt Chapman at the dugout saying, John Schneider, why are we pitching to him? Had a few other words to say as well. Uh, and then two intentional walks yesterday and two today for Otani. It wasn't a good look at all by Matt Chapman, and I think anytime you see a player reacting and speaking to his manager like that, I thought John Schneider was fantastic. He just let it go. He let him vent. I am sure there was a discussion had after the ball game, but the last thing you want to do is confront a player when he's kind of lost his school, and Matt Chapman pretty much admitted that the next day, that he, his emotions got the best of him. Yeah, I mean, Schneider, for him to be able to not don't react to that is pretty amazing, though, because it's tough not to. Well, that was the whole run on Friday. Says, why are we pitching him? He's the only guy on the team that can hit. But the most ridiculous part of it is the first inning. There, nobody on, one out. And Gosman on the mound, a dominant yeah. pitcher. And <laughs> as I like to say, Shohei has 39 home runs. He doesn't have 239 home runs. Grounded to Espinal. Couple of more left on base by the Angels. They've stranded 12, and the Blue Jays will have an opportunity to win it in the bottom of the ninth. Varsho, Merrifield, Bichette coming to bat. At Rogers Center in Toronto. We haven't figured out who's going to win this one yet. 1-1 one, one score between the Angels and the Blue Jays. And the Angels go to their bullpen for the big dog. Yeah, I mean, he's been outstanding in the All-Star season for Carlos Estevez. 23 of 23 in save situation. Obviously, it's not a save scenario here. An ERA under two. 51 punch outs in 21 walks. His fastball has been 97-98 with that great ride to it. He's got a good slider and a changeup. But his fastball away from Coors Field now has that ride late. And you look at his splits in his career, and he said it was a battle there in Colorado, but he owes a lot of his success, he said, to be able to find a way to fight and, and pitch as well as possible in that condition. And uh, Dalton Varsho has hit some balls hard today, but... We talked about it earlier. His struggles this season have been with the elevated fastball getting it up in the zone. So if Estevez can do that, much better chance against the left-handed hitting Varsho. Estevez, a first-time All-Star this season. In his first year in Anaheim as the first pitch is cut on and missed up to Varsho. And he will stay up there, especially that first one in 96. He'll be up there 98 and 99 upstairs. He runs into problems when his fastball down. Which usually you think that's where you want to throw your fastball, but not him. Stays up, a little two up. At 97 on the four seamer. Now it's interesting, a lot of hitters have an issue with the elevated fastball, especially good velocity. So people will say, well, you have to lay off it. Dalton just did. That's great. But a lot of them are in the strike zone. They're at the top of the zone. Doesn't that, as a hitter, though, sometimes you know, your eyes get bigger when you see that fastball upstairs. Is that it, what happens when you see a lot of hitters? It looks, chase you it. think you can hit it because it's close to your eyes. Yeah. Absolutely. But he's going to have to make an adjustment. I think Varsho's at that point in his career where 
he came on and he's done well, but the league's adjusted to him as well. So, you know, the adjustment goes back and forth over your first few years, and I think he's at that point now. Not even this year, but let's say going into next year. We want to find out if he can adjust to how he is being pitched. If he can, be a very good major league hitter with power. But if you can't, it's going to be an issue. These two have definitely seen each other in the past. That one way up, and it's three and two. Being over there in Arizona. Now we in the same division. Estevez had spent his entire six-year career in Colorado before signing a two-year deal with the Angels this offseason. 3-2, popped him up on the infield. Stayed with that fastball all the way through. Did not deter from going that fastball upstairs. And that's just a good scouting report. Coming from my side where I see a lot of Dalton Varsho, that's when teams have success attacking him. It's up there with the heaters, and that's exactly what he did. Now this changes a little bit because... But Merrifield's pretty good with a fastball up and away that he can hit yeah. the right center. Yes, he can handle the fastball. He can handle good velocity. He can handle the ball up in the zone. All of the above. Well, to be fair, the Blue Jays do play in the AL East, but they are 7-20 and 20 against the AL East. So they've been really good outside of their own division. 52-26, and 26, the best non-divisional record in all of baseball. I think it's been such a roller coaster for Blue Jays fans because they know this is a very good baseball team. But you have to win in your division. And the AL East is a tough one. It's a beast. What a pitch that was right there. I say a good fastball hitter, but you know what? That's a perfect fastball pitch. You can hear the bat break from up here on the hands of Merrifield. Two pop ups for the first two outs in the ninth. As the Rolling Stones would say, that shattered. Took you to the ninth inning to yes. get a musical reference in here. <laughs> I finally did. I was, I was trying. <laughs> well, we were talking Getty Lee earlier yes, today. Yes, we were. <laughs> Getty was here at the ball game yesterday, sitting behind home plate. Big Blue Jays fan. Obachet lines one foul into the seats. With two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning of a 1 1 tie. Bichette's only hit was a single in the first. Didn't walk in the third as well. Facing Carlos Estevez, popped up foul 0-2 on Bichette. Trying to get to that 10th inning where you have the runner starting at second base. And for the Angels, that'll be Mike Moustakis at second base. All-star against all-star. High 1-2. Bo Bichette's dad, Dante, played for the California Angels. Drafted in 84, played his first three seasons with the Angels. 1-1, one, one, way outside. This game has been begging for a big hit since it began. One more out will send us to the 10th. Pitch weekly back to first. Estevez takes care of business in the bottom of the ninth and sends this game to extra innings. Nodded at one.
Live from Australia and New Zealand on Tuesday the U.S. women's national team aims to top the group in their third and final game of the group stage against Portugal. American flag hanging here at Rogers Center in Toronto Ontario. As we go to the 10th inning with the game tied at one. Mike Moustakis will be the runner at second base. And a new hitter pinch hitting catcher Chad Wallach will take the place of Matt Theis here against Tim Mesa who well never mind had come out and warmed up ready to go. And as soon as they announce Chad Wallach John Schneider makes his way out to the mound. You're going already already matchup. With Renfro on deck too this gives Jimmy Garcia two righties. Grinnings, Blue Jays, and Angels both a game over 500 in these situations. But this game has been all about the missed opportunities early on in the game. It looks like it looked like we we're going to have a ton of runs on the board. And here we are in the 10th. Yeah, a lot of opportunities. Two. We talked about that, Brandy. Remember in our opening today about trying to just shorten up the swing, make contact up the middle. But the pitchers have made some really good quality pitches. A lot of times you, you, you put the blame on the hitters. But when you're making quality pitches, it's forcing them to make sure they get the barrel of the bat and haven't been able to do that. And those running runners within scoring position today. Jimmy Garcia into this ball game now. He has pitched in each game of this series. Came in Friday night. Jordan Romano came out of that game with that injury, so he had to record the final out. And then John Schneider went to him yesterday with that six to one lead to close things out in the final inning. So working three days in a row, we'll see if that impacts him at all. Wallach lays down the bunt to advance the runner to third. So Moustakis moves 90 feet from second, 90 feet away from giving the Angels a lead. As Chad Wallach, in his first plate appearance of the day, puts down the sack bunt. And you don't see that a lot for the road team to try to work for one run in this scenario because you always, if you always feel that the home team is going to score once. You're looking for multiple runs scored. I know I'm in the minority, but I like that approach. I like to get a run and put the heat on the other team. It's probably mathematically not the right thing to do. The Blue Jays between Mays and Jimmy Garcia both very good in coming in with runners on base. Coming into sticky situations, they've both done a pretty good job. So John Schneider's got his right guy out there. I'll tell you what, that was the pitch that Renfro hits a long way. He got his fastball, he fell that straight back. Even though it was 98, that was exactly the spot he looks for first pitch. Garcia facing Renfro here and he hits one well to left and gone. Hunter Renfro with a two run home run here in the 10th. Tell you what he is getting locked in mentioned that earlier from Detroit series into this series here now three hits today at a sack fly. 
driving in all three runs. He's more comfortable in the batter's box in these scenarios. That was a curveball, breaking ball, it was upstairs, and he crushed that out. We've been talking all game about his ability to pull the baseball. He hit a base hit off Jay Jackson, his last at bat out front, hit it hard to left field, and this was a hanging breaking ball out over the plate, and did he ever pull it hard to left? I guess that's how you get multiple runs <laughs> in the 10th inning then, after all. Remember we said <laughs> earlier today, both managers would agree that home runs are very cool because you don't have to worry about your numbers with runners in scoring position when you hit them out of the ballpark. Escobar swings through the pinch. Well, for a team that was 0 for 25 with runners in scoring position and playing small ball <laughs> to get that runner yes. to third base, it's the two-run home run from Hunter Renfro that gives the Angels the 3-1 lead. I'm guessing Phil Nevin is thinking just to get a ball in the air, fly ball to cash in a run. He got his fly ball all right. I mean, Perry Manassian, who's done a great job as far as adding on these pieces, even when during the wintertime, including Hunter Renfro, said he anticipated the other day, this was a couple days ago in Detroit, he goes, I feel that there's going to be a hot streak for Hunter Renfro. And today, you're seeing it again. You saw it in Detroit. And that was a great swing for him there. The excitement level, that's about as exciting he's going to get. <laughs> and I'll tell you, that baseball got out quickly. That is a strong man hitting that curveball out like that. Game over in a trade from Milwaukee during the offseason. Three hits in the game and a sack fly RBI. As a ground out by Escobar. Here's the second out of the inning. Everyone jokes around about Hunter Renfro looks a little bit like Mike Trout, but that was a Mike Trout type swing. Yep. <laughs> Quid Merrifield took about three steps and turned and watched. Kabuto time. Saying hello to his bullpen mates. So two outs and the base is empty for Trey Cabbage, who has struck out three times in the ballgame. Cabbage, 26 years old, just starting his major league career, but a long path to get to the majors. Seven years in the Minnesota system. So he takes outside. Including 2020 when he wasn't even invited to the minor league complex. Worked in his parents' basement. His dad threw him batting practice. Found a way to get to the major leagues. Had a pretty eventful first go around there with the Angels at, at home. He scores a winning run on a wild pitch, or an error, I should say, made, and then he hit a two-run home run the next day. Outstanding numbers. 2020 guy down in AAA this season. 23 home runs. Half a year in Michael baseball. He's kind of guessing wrong today. Yeah. Again, he's 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 expanding the strike zone. He's still looking for that one pitch. If he gets that pitch, he can hit a long way. I saw the home run he had off of Clayton Kershaw in spring training. Left center was way out. It looked like he was really sitting slightly. He had a good swing on that foul ball hit down the right field line off Jay Jackson in his last at bat. And it looked like he was kind of sitting those sliders, and that's why he got him on that elevated fastball. See where Garcia goes. 3-2, swing and a miss. Strike three ends the inning, but Hunter Renfro comes up with the tie-breaking home run. A two-run shot to left. Angels 3-1 to the bottom of the 10th we go.
season for Hunter Renfro has given the Angels a 3-1 lead. So we go to the bottom of the 10th inning. Angels trying to get the final game of this series after the Jays had won the first two. Carlos Estevez made quick work of the Blue Jays in the ninth, including a little tapper back to the mound from Bo Bichette to end it. So it's Bichette on second to start the 10th. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr. shoots one through the right side. And just like that on one pitch, the Blue Jays play to run. Yeah, for the Angels, that run right there doesn't mean a whole lot, but that runner at first base is huge now. Went with the fastball and went the other way. Not waiting around long at all, and that's what a lot of these Blue Jays hitters will do. But more importantly, you get a good pitch in a good zone. That's a very good swing decision, and he smokes it to right. So Guerrero, the runner at first, and nobody out for Matt Chapman. By the way, that baseball by Vlad Jr. was hit 110.8 miles oh, per hour. Wow. <laughs> wow. Chapman has a double back in the sixth inning. And that one caused Chad Wallach to jump out of his crouch. Again, Chad Wallach in the game with a nice shot getting that bunt down. You get a, a catcher in there with a little bit better throwing arm and a more experienced catcher behind the plate. Found back and out of play. Well, Estevez. 23 for 23 in save opportunities. Franchise record for the longest streak to begin a season. Came in with a game tied and kept it that way in the ninth. And that one inside is Chapman just able to turn out of the way. And trying to stay that up and in. He almost tried to turn into that one. <laughs> I don't know how good that would feel. New. No. Pitch foul back again. Count holds a two and two on Chapman. That's a tough slider to handle after that fastball rides up and in on you. And now as a hitter, you're thinking, which way is he going? I think he's got to go back to that heater. It's his bread and butter. Two two pitches up. It's three and two. To the SoCal native Matt Chapman. El Toro High School in Lake Forest. Cal State Fullerton just 10 minutes up the road from the Big A. Now batting clean up for the Blue Jays. Guerrero at first. And able throw. Only run the Blue Jays have scored today was back in the fifth inning. Prior to this one, I should say. Varsho double came around to score as Chapman works a walk. And now the tying run moves into scoring position. It's one thing Matt Chapman will do. He can take his walks, and that's an important part of this Blue Jays offense that in the past has been known so much for their power and production, but also not afraid to pass it on to the next guy. And now with that runner in scoring position, that runner will turn into Kevin Kiermeyer. Springer has rolled into 16 double plays. It has been a real issue for George this season. A lot of that, I think, too, is if he's out front of a slider, he'll roll it over into the ground. What Esteva is looking for right here. Both for four today, and he took a healthy cut at a 98 mile an hour fastball and came up empty. No small ball in this inning. No. That was a healthy hack from Springer. Now when you got this guy at the plate. Oh, one foul back. It's nothing in two. A pretty good hack at that one there, though. His timing is better on that fastball. And George can handle the ball up better than down. For the most part, and that's where you wonder if he's going to go back down with a breaking ball. Springer is 0 for his last 28. Can he break through and tie the game? Fouls away another pitch. 
Been a struggle for one of the great leadoff hitters in the game. He's been moved out of that leadoff spot, down in the order, hitting the five spot here again today. But for a World Series MVP, three-time All-Star. Takes up high, it's one and two. Just trying to find it here, and this would be an awfully good moment to find it. I feel like Kiermaier, he's starting to time Stavis. I don't think he's going here, but if, if they're able to get it, Springer out here, he's going to be trying to steal that third base. Next batter. One, two, is up. Two and two. Reynaldo Lopez is warming in the Angels' bullpen. But right now, it's Estevez against Springer. Tying run on second. Got the call, strike three. Springer punched out looking, and the Angels move within one out. See if he gets that upper quadrant of the strike zone. It's he got a break on that one. That was more of Chad Wallach getting that one. You called it new catcher into the ball game. He does a nice job receiving that pitch. I don't think George thought it was a strike, and sometimes the catcher can do that, and that's the art of receiving a pitch very well. Don't you sometimes believe it's the presentation? If you bring your glove in there so much, it, it gives the uh, illusion that it's not a strike. So just kind of just a subtle move of the baseball, keep it as close to where your pitcher supposedly hit his target. Ideally, that's what I have always thought you wanted to do, but more and more in the game with all of the framing metrics around the game in the last number of years, we see so much movement with the new style of catching and framing and receiving the baseball. Violent, violent, violent. I, I don't understand it, but they do still get the calls. We talked about this in the eighth inning. Alejandro Kirk, this is his spot in the order, but he was lifted for Kevin Biggio as a pinch runner in the eighth inning. And so Biggio will bat here with the game on the line. Takes a pitch outside. It's really important for Carlos Estevez to get the sign, get in that stretch position early enough where he can hold the baseball, because I still feel that Kiermaier might take a shot at trying to steal a bag here. I think he might, and I think he should, because Kevin Biggio has trouble with velocity. Clearly, Estevez, high-velocity pitcher, especially up in the zone and in. I think they'll continue to go right there. But you take a shot, then maybe just a weak fly ball can score a run. Mm -hmm. Tipped into the glove of Wallach, and it's one and two. Now I think it changes a little bit with two strikes. I don't know if you want to take that shot. If you're thinking of stealing third, Yukimai, you have to be sure. The, the left-handed batter, the catcher's got the clear path. One, two, strike three. Estevez gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. Two gone. Big play, and that's what I felt when you remove Alejandro Kirk's bat from the game in a tight ball game. You have to believe that spot's going to come up. Now, would he have done any better against Estevez? Who knows, but you like that matchup if you're the Blue Jays, if Kirk's at the plate. Well, you stayed with that high fastball. It's tough for left-handed batters. Anyhow, they catch high velocity upstairs, and he just stayed up there. You can see how late he was on that swing through the zone. So now it's all on the line for Danny Jansen, who has done nothing but get clutch hit after clutch <laughs> hit for the Jays this year. Does he have another one in him? Good time for some more heroics for Mr. Jansen. Foul back, and it's one and one. Well, he had a good pitch to hit right there, too. I was going to say, that was right down in that zone Center where he was on cut. it. If there is a pitch for Danny, that's when it is right there. Look how he kept his head down and his hands through that baseball. He'll have some troubles with the good velocity as well. And that's why maybe the hanging type slider or the lower velocity fastball in that location, maybe he's better off. Just didn't quite get to that one. 1-1, one, one, hit well to left. Mickey Moniak is there, and he makes the catch to end the ball game. The Angels survive, win the final game of the series. 3-2 in 10 innings. Dare I say, Brendan, the Angels went goodwill hunting. <laughs> Hunter Renfro <laughs> with all three RBIs and a huge win for the Angels to be able to pull out this last game. The Jays have shown that they are a very, very good team. Team you got to worry about all the way through if you're an Angel fan. But Hunter Renfro, 
what a game. Good series, good ball game, good efforts by both starting pitchers. It was uh, opportunities, both sides, by Barrios and by Tyler Anderson. They were able to limit that. And this is going to be a lot of fun for the next two months watching these teams. The Angels, of course, chasing the Blue Jays, but it will be a, a lot of fun in the pennant race in the American League. Big home run by Hunter Renfro. There you see the standings. The Angels are six back in the loss column in the AL West. But right now, four back of the Blue Jays. The Astros are right there as well. If you catch one, you can catch them both. The Red Sox, the Yankees, the Mariners, Guardians, all will be involved in the conversation. Trade deadlines on Tuesday. Not a whole lot of clear-cut sellers no. to be selling from. Let's send it down to the field with Ahmed and Dexter Fowler. Thank you, Brendan, with the hero of the game, Hunter Renfro, responsible for all three runs for the Angels. Congratulations. Good game today, Hunter. Did, when you woke up this morning, did you think, I'm going to put the team on my back today? Uh, you know, you try to do that every day. You try to go out there and, and do whatever you can to help the team win. And uh, whether it be, you know, getting the ball over, bunting the ball over like Wally did or, or driving them in like I did, uh, that's, that's the whole point of the game, go out there and do what you can to help win the game. Hey, talk to me about that A.B. What were you looking for right there? Uh, I mean, I was looking hard. I was saying hard. He's got a great fastball, two-seam and four-seam. I faced him quite a bit, uh, especially when he was with L.A. So um, I kind of had an idea of what he does, and, and uh, you know, his pitch is what he does. So I was able to get a good pitch and uh, able to grab it out. Hey, you did what you needed to do with that one. Right. Right. That was awesome. Right. They, uh, they, they said on the broadcast you showed uh, maybe a little more emotion in the in the dugout than you normally do after that home run. Yeah, I mean, I'm a pretty stoic guy, but, uh, you know, this is a big game for us. You know, we definitely don't want to get swept by these guys. We're playing really good ball right now. Pitching staff threw a hell of a game out there, so we got to go out there and back them up a little bit. Yeah, what do you think about the situation you're in? Because that's a hard thing. It's one of 162, but we're getting later in the year. This was uh, the team that you're chasing here lost the first two. Did this one feel a little bit more important for you guys? Oh, for sure. You know, you never want to come out here without with a sweep, so, uh, you know, we lost lost Ward yesterday uh, and a few other, other guys that are starting to come back so you know we, we really need to put ourselves in the right situation to, when they do come back that you know we can really make a run for it for sure. You think they're going to pitch to Shohei again or did we see a, a turning of the tides here in this series? Uh, I mean I, I think they're going to do what they have to do you know I, I think you know obviously you saw what Matt said you know I think that's that's how everybody feels you know that guy is is one of a million that guy is incredible so um, you'd rather pitch to him or Mickey, which is hitting over almost 1,000 OPS as well. But, um, you know, that kid is super special. And, and uh, you, I mean, you got to do what you have to do to win, uh, to win a game. So, I ask you that. <laughs> You're not mad. You don't blame, you don't no, blame them, right? Not. I mean, I, I, I get it. I get it. Sure. Well, as long as you keep hitting like you yeah. are right now in this series, uh, they're not going to be able to do that much longer. Hunter Renfro, the hero of the game. Congratulations, Hunter. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Brendan, back That's to awesome. you. All right, thanks so much, guys. 3-2 the final. Renfro, the hero for the Angels. MLB Sunday lit-up continues next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. White Sox and Guardians. For more post-game coverage, stay tuned. Ahmed Farid and Dexter Fowler will wrap up the day. For Mark Bubiza and Joe Siddle, I'm Brendan Burke. Thank you for watching MLB Sunday lead-off. Coverage presented by Uber One.